Okay. Now, okay, I will now start, I'll do it as a motion now. I move to open the uh, December 1st meeting of the Conservation Commission at 717. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> okay, any discussion? Roll call vote. Michael, aye. Courtney? Aye. Matt? Aye. Steve? Aye. Carol? You're muted. Kurt? Aye. Okay, and Kurt? Aye. Okay. Uh, Aye. Um, Okie doke. So, uh, let's go on here. Any, uh, as to the agenda, are there any issues that's come up in the 24 hour rule that we're concerned about? Okay, hearing none. Uh, then we'll just move forward. Okay, we have a half an hour before the uh, um, before the continued public hearing on Three Prospect Street. In this half hour, let's do with some of the discussion items. We don't have any minutes yet to review. No, we're still working on there. Um, what I want to suggest is we do a first cut. I only put some files on the. Uh, on the budget in there um, only a few hours ago that we worked on something, but I'm going to share a screen and talk a little and see what questions you want to ask. And um, hopefully you see two files side by side here. Um, and uh, with who knows what Zoom things in front. Um, we can vote on it formally there. You guys can have time to read it all for the next meeting. I just wanted to walk through some of the stuff. Basically, overall, we have about a $100,000 budget of which uh, the vast majority, 90% of it is, uh, is staff and salaries, as you'll see on the right side there, on the left side there, excuse me. Um, and uh, what we're doing is uh, overall, we're coming in, at what the town just defines as what I might've said last time is a level funded budget when they ask for that each year, which is essentially staffing costs staying the same with the cost of living increase. And then you're the other, uh, then your expenses, generally stay the same. Sometimes there's an inflation issue uh, for the non-staff or other expenses item. In our case, if we view it as just no, no inflationary pressure on our expenses, a level funded budget would be about $101,000, a little bit over that, which is a number here, 101,422. Um, and then uh, what we're what I'll go through is our proposed budget, which has some changes in different line items, and but it comes out with an amount that's uh, a proposed budget that's just like a percent less, essentially. Um, it's even less than that. This is just almost a, almost one hundred one thousand dollars, a very re small reduction of six hundred thirty three dollars. The main driver here and is explained in the text here that you can read um, on your own at some point. I don't, I don't want to take the time now since we don't have to vote tonight is um, that the base for our salaries is what we had historically with the and then with the cost of living increase, which would be in this first column here is the base for what I call a base, which is level funded which is the 35 agent hours at the salary that was last year's salary plus the cost of living increase of four and a half percent. Um, and then the assistant hours of 18 with the uh, assistant salary raised by four and a half percent from the previous year. And that would lead to a total of about almost uh, $86,000. 
the big change we have is that we have this salary and some of this was based on when we were applying, when we had people who are not as, as experienced and we we're doing some training as well as some levels of experience. We're trying to budget now to give us room in terms of hiring the budget for somebody who is ex who's ex uh, sort of well, uh, is, 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 well ex is very experienced. Um, where we had done some conversations, I think I said last time, with the personnel board and went through it with the uh, interim town manager that uh, we'd been seeing salaries for experienced people um, that were about over $40 an hour. We selected a $40 an hour sort of higher end that we got approved. Um, sort of somewhat of an informal process with the chair of the personnel board and working with the uh, interim town manager. Um, so, and we're hoping that with, just to keep the budget a little more moderated that with an experienced person uh, who's very well qualified, that maybe we could have a little shaving of the hours to 33. Um, so basically we're looking at what we could talk about is that we've come up with, let's say Kelly, Courtney, and I with the idea of, of putting forth a budget that gives us room for a new hire um, that's well qualified and would lead to a total budget of 90, a little over 92,000 or about six and a half thousand dollars more, which is a, uh, it's, which is a whatever, about a 7% increase or so, seven or eight. Um, and so that's a not, it's not a lot, but it's not an insignificant cost increase. Um, part of how we're doing this is also, as I'll go into, is that we would, so that's that part of how we get to this level of not, of a relatively, of a flat budget is that we have some cost savings on the expenses side so that we can put forward a, uh, an overall level funded budget. Um, as what's so outlined here on the staffing here, they they had there's a spreadsheet that I showed you last time where you stick all these numbers in, and then there's a, a text here to back it up. Um, essentially, I just talked about the staffing part here about how we're just trying to budget for an experienced person here and have the leeway to hire a the appropriate person. Um, the land management is where uh, there's been a lot of different changes, as I think I started with last time, um, that TPW is doing a lot of our, is able to do um, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the land management or basic land management. And, and they're finding the time and they're eagerly doing it. So as we tip our hat in this text here to the fact that DPW has been very supportive um, I don't even know, Kelly, whether you could chime in that, are we actually going to be, have some money to return this year because of the help from DPW that we, <clears throat> this fiscal year? Yes, yes, absolutely. And that's one question I've wondered because, uh, you may want some of that surplus <clears throat> for the remainder of this fiscal year for Joyce. Oh, uh, we might. We might want it. I'm just saying that we will probably. Uh, it's unlikely that we will want that or the need that, given that. But we will have that. But it's likely. I was. I, I bring it up because I would probably put even in this. I would be willing to venture that. In addition, we ex because we talk about how the DPW is doing more effort and helping us greatly. That we will probably expect to come in under budget for this, even when I look at what the staff budget might turn out for this year, that I think we will still have some surplus to return to the town in exchange for the fact that DPW has been able to do work. So I'd like to- Michael, just one, um, <clears throat> the <clears throat> Carol and Xenia Wild and Sam Nelson and I have been going over <clears throat> a lot of land management issues on the side as a working group. And 
we, not for tonight certainly, but there may be some other uses for some part of the land management surplus that we would ask the commission to consider. Okay. Um, fine. I still, as a, we could disagree about the level when we talk about it, but I'd still like to, even when we look at our budgets there, whether we still leave some little amount to return, but we could talk about that later and maybe this sentence here um, that uh, uh, it's softened. Um, uh, and uh, we may or something like that. Uh, I think I'd like to see something in recognition of all the work that we've gotten from them. And that uh, at least is the way I view it. Others might feel differently. Um, by the way, before I lay on to land management, did anybody have any questions about the salary scenario? I guess it's really whether people feel comfortable with going with the proposed 33 and 40. You can think about it between now and the next meeting, but does anybody have any initial questions about that? Hearing none, I move forth. So on land management, where we had a total of 13,000 roughly in this current fiscal year, um, what's, discuss what's discussed here is the fact that we can probably do most of that um, and that we're not ready to move ahead unless things change. But at this point, we haven't come up with all of the, uh, just due to some delays in, in dealing with the land inventory studies and what it is we wanna get agreement on what we wanna do to move forward, that we can still do our basic stuff plus some other additional projects. And that uh, Kelly has worked up a budget of about $6,000 instead of the 13,000. Um, that, yields, that's where the $7,000 in savings that sort of counterbalances the staff increase comes from. Uh, but essentially that budget, now our land management budget has gone up over the years to cover certain things. Sometimes the budgeters like to just see things constantly. I personally don't agree with that philosophy and feel like if we come up with special projects that we can defend and that we wanna do, then we go forth with them when we have them. Um, and when, uh, and so the fact that the budget will go down from 13 to six, but if we then in the succeeding year or so come up with things to move forward on, um, we have our, some of our funds to expend, uh, on land management so that we could do some of it on our own, as well as we could come up with a budget in, in an FY25 that includes some of these things after we've started discussing it. And at some point we can bring the inventories to a more public audience. I'd still like to think we will have a public uh, hearing and, and uh, presentation of the land of the management, land management inventories. Yes. Uh, so hopefully at some point we'll have that and we'll, and we'll continue to come up with ideas for land improvements and and we can revise that in terms of how we want to fund it versus from our funds versus the operating budget for FY25. At this point, there's not a lot put in here as the major activities here are these bullets when you go to read it. Um, are to what the basis of the $6,000 are in terms of certain things that we DPW can't do, some tree work, other kind of trail building especially with regard to bridges and some other uh, planned activities that we haven't quite enumerated yet. Um, and plus we also have to see how the relationship with DPW goes forward. Um, how that, just to see that that continues, at the, uh, that they can perform the way they've done so far. Um, so this is, you could look at it, this is the basis of what we need the 6,000 for. And we also, as we know, as I discussed last time, we do have other fund sources. If we come up with stuff in FY24 that we think are particularly useful to do and of timely. So we have other ways of funding that. Um, 
That's land management. Any comments, questions at this point? Michael, just one. <clears throat> so presumably it will be in two weeks from tonight that um, decisions will be made. Correct. Could I request again that that come at the beginning of the meeting? Fine. Done. Uh, okay. Uh, if there's no question on the land management, uh, whoa. I think like a touchy little touch bed. Um, the, uh, there are $2,000, dollars or so of other miscellaneous expenses that I went through last time of which we're not doing any changes. Um, but we don't quite know dues and subscriptions. They usually go up a little bit. I don't know whether we're, what the MACC fees will be, but we could always move it around if things change. But I guess hopefully, Kelly, you talked with De what Deborah has, or you've looked at the current expenditures for the last four or five months to see that uh, that there's nothing big that's going to change in these things here. Generally, we can move monies around. I mean, the office supplies might be a little bit high. Glaring. That's obvious. That's going to be a major change. And because it's one big single budget, I see no difficulty in, as you say, shifting a few dollars here and there for things like dues and memberships and small stuff. So you're saying you do see any a major change? No, no, no. I, I don't see any big okay. change, but if there were changes that came at the level of the um, office supplies and so forth, I don't see any difficulty in covering it. Right. Um, okay. So we have this here. I guess the office supplies is the only one that I thought maybe we'd lower and maybe we should have more in meetings and seminars um, is one shift. Um, I When I'm doing this and sharing the screen, okay, I see a note that Steve raised his hand. So commission members, you could just feel to chime in. Okay, I was just wondering what, uh what uh, Kelly was referring to, he was talking about decisions being made on the budget. What, what kind this of- has to be, <clears throat> The commission has to vote on this. Um, and <clears throat> you will all want to read it more carefully and think a little bit and maybe make some changes here or there in the wording, I don't know. But um, it, it can't get sent to the town without a formal vote. Okay. Yeah, it's just a matter of, uh, I mean, um, I'm not expecting us to go through all of this that closely as opposed to next meeting, everybody will have read this more carefully uh, or have read it carefully um, since I only, we only put it up there today. Um, and we'll also put together the spreadsheet that embodies this. That the uh, that the town sends out to everybody. Um, Michael, did they? Um, does the dues and subscriptions include? We were talking about getting an online version of the MACC handbook. I think. Do we know that that's included? That's super valuable. Um, we can uh, we can move some money around here the next time. I guess why not? Uh, Deborah, if you call up the MACC or somebody to find out what those what the subscription costs and what's included in our membership, does that make does that make sense? And you can ask them if they know. I don't know what I can't remember when the dues come in. Yeah, they generally came uh, late late summer. Okay, but I certainly have you know the call numbers and contacts that I could um, you could, see, or you could find it online maybe just find yeah. what it is so that we could just move that around and maybe from office supplies we can more explicitly move it there so that it's it's a more clear thing there yeah Carol if you could just give me the exact title that would be helpful I will send that to you it's okay. 65 dollars okay okay so we will uh um uh, we'll increase this one here and i guess the dues if they're i don't know i guess we should check 
Well, we always flex it around there. Okay. So we can include the dues and subscriptions. We could do plus 65 here, and we will reduce it somewhere in materials and uh, office supplies here. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, I will get those number, those exact numbers to you. Okay. Uh, okay. Deborah, I just put the link into the- I link. see, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. Any other comments? Okay. Um, this thing here, uh, we'll see which document, but whatever it is, you might not see. This doesn't get in there. These are just minor changes anyway that I'm actually realize I'm making it on my computer file as opposed to what's in on the meeting thing there. But just go to the meeting thing there and, uh, and people can also, if you want to write in some comments and either download it and do some track edits or you could put some suggested edits in online in the uh, in the meeting folder for tonight and just send an email uh, to uh, to uh, to Courtney and me and Kelly that you've made some comments online. Uh, so I said you could do it even in advance. Okay. Any other comments before we move on? Okay. I just have a quick question. Sure. I think I think it's be a very simple answer to this, but uh, when we attend uh, we, uh, a workshop, we're, we're and looking for reimbursement. Where does that come? That's meetings and seminars, or correct? Okay. Yes. Um, sometimes there's money there. Sometimes we run out of money, and some people people vary a lot as to what they do about that. But yes, that's where it would come from. Uh, Anything else before we move on? Okay, we have six minutes before our uh, hearing. Um, I would want to do, as I try to get through things on the agenda, as to administrative approvals. Okay, um, Michael, I will say goodbye and thank you. Okay, and thank you for your effort on this. Um, I'll move to some smaller things. The uh, administrative approvals, we have two on the agenda. Um, Joyce, are they, uh, have they been addressed or? Um, I'm, just, I'm just pulling the agenda up, sorry. My it's uh, zero Brush Hill Road for soil testing. Uh, zero Brush Hill Road. Um, I have to go out where there's some wetlands way out back that I have to measure to. So the other one to go, Brush Hill Road, it probably will get uh, approved tomorrow. Okay, well then we'll do, it'll be on our next agenda. So it's not yep. for tonight. So that's to be determined. 132 Nason Hill Road. Yes, that's fine. Okay, so that's out of jurisdiction. Yep. Um, okay, dealt with that. Got two minutes there. No minutes there. Is there a warrant? I guess not. Uh, no, not this time. Okay. Uh, announcements. It's our all purpose uh, thing there. If anybody has any specific things to uh, let us know about. Um, okay. There's nothing there. Um, and let's see the other things there we can talk about after the hearing i guess it's mainly the uh, affordable housing one and under land management we might we could talk a little about the trail bridges but it's also added something that falling carol you want to talk about invasives there you brought that up it's I believe um, Kelly asked to put off the bridges until the next meeting. Oh, I did, but I, I think it's something we need to. Oh, okay. We, we could spend a little time just educating ourselves on reading his document there, but we don't have to do that one tonight. Um, and. Uh, well, I think the invasives management was very brief that uh, I don't have that much to say about that, except the land management task force is talking about the possibility of using some of the 
funds that we do have to do invasives management, like do take a more sophisticated approach right now. We're just doing mowing, but, you know, get some expert help and decide on where to do it. But I don't think that that little group is ready to provide any specific recommendations yet. Okay. So is that something we, so we should just wait in terms of whether it even, we need to put it on the, we have to wait till you guys sort out some stuff before we put it back on the agenda. Yeah, I think we're looking at some of those inventories for each of those different properties and trying to figure out where to start. There's plenty of invasives on our conservation <laughs> lands. <laughs> I'd say so. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, my issue is more about it. Where is it worth fighting and what approach to take? Uh, I told yeah. you, let's say, I'm Nelson at the open house on the climate action plan about some of uh, my views about. Uh, but, I think that basic idea is shared by everybody on that little group. Like, where do we get started? And we need to do some discussions about that. Right. Um, for those who, uh, I guess, um, let's see. Oh, good. Shang is here. Um, the, uh, uh, um, let's see on the, so that's the invasive thing there. We dealt with that choice in our two minute or minute. Do you have a, a side issue of some sort? If any? I'm sorry, say that again? Do you have any side issues? I we... don't know. Okay, fine. So we will have left, we have the hearing that, uh, We'll take some sorting through so we can get, move this thing forward. And then we're left with uh, some beginning discussion on the uh, affordable housing project. I think it's gonna be more for the next meeting as well. Um, but uh, okay, it's gonna be everything. And I am just watching my clock to get to 7.45 uh, to be legalistic about it to be illegal, let's put it that way. Um, so we got here. Okay, 7.45, we made it here. Um, I'd like to uh, now reopening, oh, I can't even speak correctly. Um, I am now, Reopening the public, the continued public hearing of the notice of intent under the Sherburne Wetlands Bylaw for Three Prospect Street for the proposed demolition of an existing house, construction of a new single family dwelling within the buffer zone of an isolated wetland. Okay, we have received a lot of uh, new material yesterday, which we haven't all tried to go through so we could be responsive, but there was a limit to how far we can get, I can get on this. Um, let's see, uh, I don't know how much, I guess we can let, whether the best way to go is whether to Shang, you wanna just give an overview of what you've done between uh, now, between the last meeting and this meeting. And then we could just sort of drill in on uh, all the nitty gritty issues. So I have my list so we can see if we can move this forward. All right. Uh, good evening uh, uh, for the record. My name is Tushin Wang, Creative Land and Water Engineering. As uh, the chair just uh, uh, requested. So we received from last hearing to this hearing, we actually submitted all uh, uh, revisions and uh, responded to the commission's first 18 items comments and uh, submitted the 23rd. And then, so we received a second comment letter. Uh, so yesterday, technically. Uh, so, well, the day before, but uh, yes, yeah, the day before, but the, I, I was in the field the whole day. So didn't get time to, uh, to see it until the evening. Uh, evening the day before. So we crunched it out yesterday and sent out our uh, response. And uh, so that's uh, the procedure wise. And then uh, we appreciated the, 
a commission and the agent provided us, you know, new information. And uh, so to clarify things, we tried our best to provide in the requested information. In our general opinion is that most of them is more like a scope of work and the better protection of the area uh, of interest. And uh, also providing some uh, additional data. So to, I think it the, the expanded a little bit more on the protection area in the buffer and the no disturbance zone. And uh, so we added some more detailed, like in uh, how the roof runoff is going to supply the water uh, through a mechanism that will reduce erosion uh, to the wetland. And we also added the two more shrub species into it. And we uh, did a, another in-depth look at the overall of the wetlands area. We did reduce the um, alteration. So therefore have a less uh, replication area compared with uh, uh, some middle from, from the beginning. So given the limited water resource, we all know uh, this wetlands is a groundwater recharge wetlands. And I, I, I hope uh, the commission or all the commission members are clearly uh, understand the difference, uh, groundwater recharge and discharge, uh, uh, groundwater discharge and groundwater recharge wetlands because their function is quite different and that this water resource to sustain them is quite different. And so we try to explain at the last meeting. So and uh, it feels a little bit maybe still not clear. I, uh, if you need it, I will elaborate a little bit more. But uh, I assume uh, at this point we are clear enough. So I mean, to to maximize the success, and the, we also understand this replication is a little bit experimental, and as. At the same time, we want it more, but we know the water resource to sustain it is limited due to uh, the side condition from the well. And uh, any changes in climate and uh, whatever water use uh, in the neighborhood so could all impact that availability. So that's why we added, so from our best professional judgment, to adding more uh, roof runoff into the area. Uh, and then also for the added shrubs, and we reduced from 30 to 20 for the reason that we feel it will be uh, the, uh, since the area was reduced. And uh, if we put more shrubs there based on DEP recommendation for shrubs is, you know, 10, 10 to uh, 12 foot of spacing is just already too dense. So it may change in the character of the wetlands too much. So 20, we feel is already more than enough and it may even a little bit more, but that's a, it, we know it's experimental to some degree. Uh, I don't want to pretend I know 100% sure uh, that uh, so this amount of shrubs is the best, but uh, that's to my best judgment. I, I we adjust it to 20, but uh, increase the species to four. And uh, we also moved that uh, uh, the, the fence uh, to the limit of lawn and further away, like 10 feet from the wetlands. So for the setback, so reduce the backyard a little bit. Uh, I will, so, it, so, so all the items are in it. We did provide a lengthy checklist. Most of them, uh, a good amount of them, it's, uh, it's more, more or less a clarification and not applying to this project. Okay, and uh, so I, I don't know if you want me to show you the plan or I should have. I think we, I will, I think I'll suggest that. Um, I mean, some of us have looked at it whether, uh, right, you could briefly walk through the plan and then I think we'll just start with a checklist of questions rather than go through all of your things there. Okay. And, and then that might be the more time efficient manner of just. Okay. Uh, so we'll just uh walk through our different lists that different people might have of issues okay um, so, and so, then and then but because the overall process will be hopefully that um 
uh, we can get through resolving all of these things and some additional, if I can still tell after this afternoon that there's some additional information needed, but I'm hoping we can get through uh, what all that is so that while we, I don't think we'll close the hearing tonight, we could still get to the point where we could draft an order of conditions between this meeting and the next meeting so that the next meeting we can all agree on the, uh, go over the order of conditions at the same time, close the hearing and then vote on the project um, uh, all at one time there, rather than even going through close, sometimes you close a hearing, you do findings, you still write an order of conditions, which still takes a while, but we'll try to collapse that all into this interim period of two weeks between this meeting and the next meeting with, because this, there's still some few, just a few gaps. Um, but you can just highlight the major changes there. Uh, and then I might uh, share the screen for my comments. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, so the first thing highlight is the limit of lawn was moved to the edge of the dripping line. Actually, this is not really just the, the woods of the, of the, it's just the crown line. It's not the tree line, just like in what you would see here. And uh, we smoothed it out and added the, uh, the, uh, the monument, so the red square, and uh, we add three more on this side of it. So to, to add, to including even some uh, ultra uh, uh, buffer zone into the, uh, the protection area. And uh, uh, so, so this fence was moved out right now, it's 10 feet. And uh, there's a details for the roof, uh, roof connection to the to inside of this. The grading, I think the commission requested for 10 scale, but I, we, we double look, checking again, if I grow into this scale, well, if, if it's printed in full scale, it's very clear, the spot, shot, and the proposed grading line, existing line, there's no mistake. The overall in the replication area, excavation is about six inches to a foot, no more than a foot of excavation. So any contractor, they are not gonna read any narrative, the spot shot and the contour lines, that's what they normally follow. And uh, we will have a wetland scientist on the site every critical stage and roughing in and uh, for uh, transplanting, harvesting, all that. So we made it into the notes. And uh, we also detailed, provided the scientific name into uh, on the plan. So sort of you can see, uh, so this is a table. Uh, the, the planting schedule with uh, trees and, uh, in the buffer zone, shrubs in the wetland replication area, and the ground cover. So that's all increased pretty much to, uh, to meet the conservation second comment ladder. The deep, we have to split our uh, joints into two sheets, so which you can see the neighbor's impact. So on the plan, we also detailed the color code for the uh, table one updating. So we have existing and the proposed uh, detailed impact of uh, wetlands and the buffer zone. And uh, it's all uh, color coded with the number of air, uh, area number and the corresponding to our table is uh, over here detail. And this is a cross section of the wetland replication to the fence. And uh, you can see how this coming in, there will be like a riser with a, a round gravel protection around the riser about a foot. So when the water buffering out, it's not going to be causing like in a uh, shoot out, uh, like in a typical uh, rare ended pipe. So this is uh, the one we, we feel is more suitable for this. Uh, we actually already did that, but just uh, was rushed out and didn't put in this, uh, forgot to put, this portion of the connection and the mechanism into this uh, into this profile, and uh, uh, the replicate the planting replication is detailed out. So, in a way, to guarantee as the mass uh, recommendation. So we all know that usually they require uh, like a ten to uh, ten inch or more or less of uh, loam. But we, on the side, we have plenty of loans, 12 to 15, some places maybe even 18. We will make sure 
uh, the depth of the loam in the replication area will maintain that uh, condition. So means even we have to excavate it down, we will probably over excavate it and the harvest the uh, the loam from the replication area or or even even nearby because the whole site have a similar soil structure. It's not the wetland area is much different at all compared with the soil structure layer. So it's just that the water made it hydrologically uh, more suitable for some wetland plant to grow. So any of the soils, in uh, our opinion, it will sustain the growth with the adequate water resource added to it. So, and so that's a tool sheet and, and the, we feel it's very clear. So the, uh, so the limit of a, a lawn is very demar demarcated with the erosion control line. And uh, uh, so the information requested from the neighbors, we added to it clearly to show. And uh, so uh, I think that's the, pretty much the highlight or the notes the planning was updated as uh, to 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 clear refine so rather than uh, to to uh, to make it very clear and no mistake and again on top of it we have to emphasize that the design engineer and the wetland scientists will be there at the critical uh, phase of the construction to make sure the preparation of the uh, replication area transplanting and planting is all inspected and controlled as designed. So that's, that's what I can uh, emphasize. Uh, eventually, uh, this is falling into the, the wetland scientists and the, for two year monitoring to show the success. Okay, thank you. I'd like to, uh, I guess as chair, I'll see whether I impose a little bit of structure for, um, for now for commission discussion and questions that um, that we sort of start a little from a higher level of the overall site disturbances and areas. Um, why don't you stop sharing? I'm gonna share my screen so I can, um, that, uh, let's see here. Um, Let's see, I'm just gonna do it here. I'm gonna put back on this thing here. Uh, oops, let me get this thing out of the way here. For some reason, okay. Um, I'm gonna suggest, I st I'm gonna try to start from a, uh, I don't know where this is a little bit larger here. Why the hell it is. And looking at the, I'm gonna, I'll open up with some observations about the overall impacts here. Um, and that actually this table needs a little bit, I think some correcting here, but in sum, we, for newer members as well, we tend to look at the amount of disturbance in each, either the resource area, zero to 50 and the 50 to 100 buffer zone. And what's good, what's pre and post, um, even from my own brain. Essentially, we have starting from the resource area, um, we do have this. Um, trying to blow it up more for people. Uh, we do have essentially a change in the resource area. This is unusual for us. So, therefore, just for the applicant and others. This is an unusual project for us. Normally, we don't have we don't have imp actual impacts in the resource area and doing replication. So we're trying to be more careful about how we do this, even though it's a small project. Um, that we have the resource area essentially being uh, filled in the small area here and then replaced by two replication areas that are exceeding it by about one and a half, 1.7. So that we're achieving a, a, at least a, a greater, even though replication is a tricky process. So I, at the resource area for me, I see where we're going on this. Um, the air, looking at before and after everything gets a little 
unlike other projects where you have pre and post what's in the 50 to zero to 50 and the 100 to the 50 to 100. Here, when we change the resource area, then the buffer zones change. So you get, so it gets to be some weird math in the table as to what's uh, in some places the, the buffer zone actually expands. Um, in, the, in the buffer zone, the, the inner buffer zone roughly, what, what's not shown here is that, and I will go back to is that we're trying to put this, a lot of this area was altered as they show here. Um, what we're also trying to get here is that I think an area that roughly goes around here, as if you can see my cursor, is becomes protected. Right now it's sort of disturbed right up to the wetlands, including the wetlands. I mean, and this is also a wetlands that are significant, somewhat disturbed. And so we're getting essentially improvement of the wetland conditions from my point of view, my thinking. So we're getting, I don't, the replication's tricky, but we're getting a reasonable ratio. We're getting some improvement of these wetlands given some of the degradation that's happened there. We're gonna basically protect more of the buffer zone here. That isn't because the house right now goes cl very close. That that fence, which could be marked here, is that essentially that, and some monuments essentially protect some of this disturbed area here so that we get a better, from my thinking, better buffer zone, inner buffer zone protection, even though there'll be a lot of buffer zone here that's lawn, which is of some value, but not the greatest value for buffer zone. Um, and we have the burn issue that will give some protection but that. So there's an area here of, of inner buffer zone that gets protected, which is important for my thinking. Um, we will hopefully already get some and there's protections that will be placed clearly here. So in the inner buffer zone, I feel like it's a lot of it's mostly altered anyway, uh, a lot of it, but we're getting an area that's going to be significant. The closest area will be significantly protected and return to a higher quality buffer zone. That's one of the issues to talk about is the pitch, how the planting of that protected area is. Um, and then we have the lawn area here. In the outer buffer zone, essentially, um, and there's also a bit of impervious area here that's converted back to, to goes to lawn. Uh, overall, when you look at the numbers in the table here below, that there's a, in terms of roof and driveway in the, uh, in the, uh, zero to 50 foot zone, that goes from about basically you're eliminating this impervious area in the buffer, in the inner, in the outer buffer zone, you're getting, you already have this area here, you have this area there, you're getting this large amount here, which is uh, a significant increase. It's, I guess to some extent you're getting this area here is about 2000 square feet difference when you look at the inner and outer, when you look at the outer buffer, when, when you look at roof and driveway, for the two on the table there, there's about a, an increase in 2,000 square feet, which is balanced by some of this changing here and more protection here, for me at least. Um, there's some numbers in the, uh, I would like to think that we're getting, uh, so overall, um, and there's a little less, I guess, right, we have the apples and oranges of more protected inner buffer zone, a higher improvement in the quality of the buffers of the resource itself. And, but on the other hand, the outer buffer zone has, uh, has a, an increase in impervious area. So that's, for me, that balance overall, I think is workable in terms of the, uh, the square footage numbers that come out. So I just want to stop at that point for people to comment on uh, that overall view of the project before we get down to drill in on the nitty gritty of how the replication is done. And even the specifics, I have issues around how this area here is protected and, and landscape and, uh, and planted. Um, and even some, uh, and even some like erosion control in the interim. 
Um, but I do like some of the issues like the roof runoff to supplement the replication. I'll stop there before we get to some other nitty gritty. Do people have comments on that aggregate level of, of moving ahead? Because we're essentially moving towards that finding out how to define a good replication and good protection of the buffer zone for a project we could approve. It might, if I can, just a quick call, uh, a clarification, just I think you had mentioned to it. Uh, so the loop uh, is located uh, not just uh, uh, in the older buffer zone, but also downgrading of it. So that water doesn't originally, no matter what, will not contribute to the wetlands uh, function. But by the mechanism we provided, divert the back uh, part of the loop into the wetland replication area for such a groundwater recharge wetlands is, I believe, it's a great enhancement for, to to uh, to make to providing this mechanism to sustain the, the wetland. Okay, I I acknowledge that that's an interesting that I think that that is a nice um, idea to maintain to sustain the re replication area. So uh, I agree with you. I tip my hat to that idea. But any other? Well, let's stay with the commission for people to reflect on this bigger picture. Just go ahead, anybody. Well, um, I think I, I still, uh, probably my main concern with this is that even though there is gonna be some enhancement of the, um, the wetland area and that there's so much elimination of both the 50 foot and the 50 to 100, um, I don't, I feel like the balance is not, I'd like to see a better balance there. And because also I feel like the wetland replication is somewhat risky. Um, so I guess I, I've been disappointed that the, that there has not been more of an effort at avoidance and minimizing the lawn area, um, to provide healthy 50 foot buffer there because it, I I do you know I know we had asked for the fence 10 feet from the new you know reconfigured wetland but um it still feels that there's quite a bit of net loss here so that that's what really concerns me and uh, looking at the site, it's you know it feels to me that still the house could have been pulled farther away from the wetland, and that that is the first course that's recommended in the wetland mitigation guidelines avoidance. Oh, okay. Other comments from other members? Um, yeah, pursue it a little bit more with you, Cal. Right. I see your point. I guess given how disturbed and sort of previously altered a lot of the inner buffer zone is, I feel, I guess, where I come out may be a little more comfortable with, with this. I mean, if we can get down and drill in on when it comes to protection, um, I assume this is the same as on the first page here, even though this thing is, yeah, it's the same. It's a crazy mesh of, of, of lines. Is that right? To me, this the fence line here, I appreciate that it was brought out. I would uh, um, that I think that we're getting, since there's other, I guess, altered areas out here, that I think we're getting. Um, that I guess to some extent there was a lot of buffer zone that was already altered and and had a house on it in, in terms of the inner buffer. And that I guess getting that to some extent, um, having a reasonable part of that. Um, yeah, I, it's it would be nice to have more, but a lot of this is already altered for me. I would I could live with. I could feel like it's all right here. I would like to see a little bit more protected here, like this little wedge in here to me. 
I would like to see that uh, that more of the inner buffer zone is protected here, that this provides, rather than have this little cutting off of, of, uh, of buffer zone. So to me, I would like to see to get a little more contiguous inner buffer zone to have it protected here. Um, and I would like to see even the monuments. I don't, there's nothing, the 50 foot is important, but the 100 foot buffer zone is also critical given how much work is being done here that I would even, uh, um, that these monuments are moved out uh, even to the tree line here so that there's more buffer zone uh, that's it's not a lot more, but more buffer zone that's clearly protected. I mean, there's an issue of what to what extent this is already altered. Pardon me, I guess I didn't have a chance to go back out and look at the site. To what extent this buffer zone back here should be, um, could be protected too, to address my own and some of the points that Carol brought up of that there could be more of a more of the buffer zone protected here and some more of it here. Um, and um, so I don't know what, I guess just to stop at that point there, whether, I mean, that is a, a slight addition to along what you're looking at, Carol, but. Yeah, I, I guess to me too is, that, you know, I do, Almost everywhere in Sherburne, these buffer zones have been altered. But when I was on the site, and you can see from the report, is that you know it's returned to a fairly natural state. There's it's basically kind of a rough meadow um, with a fair number of trees. So I think there definitely is value in protecting as much as of the uh, fifty to one hundred as can be protected, since the natural one of the things that can easily happen is if it's not protected, the homeowner thinks, oh, you know, I can regain, maybe I'll cut down these trees here, or maybe I'll do this, or maybe I'll do that. And we know that in the 50 to 100, those wooded areas with the leaf litter are exactly where, you know, the um, woodland critters summer. So um, yeah, I'm very, I'm, I'm very concerned about the extent of lawn. Um, well, at this point in the process, right, the weather, I mean, uh, to be practical as a, right, definition of how much is altered and gone back is always a tricky one. Um, I guess we, we have to come to an agreement as a commission, even if we're not happy or we don't all agree on whether and whether the applicant, I'll just throw it out there, whether the applicant is willing to at least add some more buffer zone in. We're always pushing for more buffer zone protection here. Um, and that, um, I guess you actually have, is that a monument out there? Yes. Um, that um, I'm assuming the fence could have, would have the thickness there, but that we're looking even this area is unaltered, for example, or relatively, I mean, you can clean it up. I would like to think that, that even that to some extent, this area here, the sort of broader area here is protected. And I think that to me is a beginning of a, a somewhat, as we, even though you might say, we keep changing the, um, the effort here, but I think we talked about this before of protecting more of this area here from, you have the limit of lawn here. Uh, and the question is, is whether this is also, uh, to what extent this air buffer zone is also basically to be protected and whether this whole area here is more clearly protected as well as a little bit more area up here so that then we can uh, get the aggregate picture and whether that's a compromise um, between some of the things I think, Carol probably would, might want more. I don't know what other members feel, whether that's, whether that's something that the applicant um, 
could agree to some more of this so that we can move on from this. Uh, I feel more comfortable with allowing all of the work here that's being done in the buffer zone. Michael, I would just add in the 50 to 100 behind the barn, why not protect, you know, starting within 10 feet of the barn? It's not, you know, there's no, I don't see any reason not to protect that as, as upland that is associated. It's in the 100. I give up. If I may, if I may, uh, to clarify some, uh, so I think we were trying to, uh, to looking at looking yeah. at the situation is yeah. uh, when we we gave them more wetlands, which also if you're looking between the Ooh. green and the pink Ooh. line, we already so almost created, doubled it. We, 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 John, let me think. So we yes, already John. added more in all buffer zone. As, uh, as a protection, as a, Mike, you know, when we making the wetlands bigger, so 1.7, we pretty much make the indoor buffer zone also bigger. And that's first. And second, if we're really looking, looking at the stone wall, anything beyond, it's in a totally different watershed. You see the water doesn't even go into this. It's, and the tree is already there to provide in the shade, which will not be impacted. And that so so when we say when when we have this uh, bond to the east side, which is already provided protection of generating that tree line, so that tree line is not going to be impacted. No matter, so the tree is inside, and if you're looking at the the stone wall, it's a, it's a basically yeah. around the stone wall, the water will shed in two directions. Any border okay. going beyond that. Is not going to add in any function, noble, and the majority. That's, that's a little bit different issue. I, I, I want to go. I'd like to get some more commissioners to weigh in, so we can see if we can move this towards where people. Yeah, yeah we cannot just keep moving target. Right? I don't want to keep doing it either. I just want to see if we could right. create this level. But the commission needs to have a discussion right now, and you know, so, Dishang, you're probably going to hear things that you're itching well, to jump on, but. You just you just need to. I, I open the door. Through. I will defend that. I open the door to ask about that sort of thing there. So let's what's what's the rest of the commission weigh in so that we can see if we can get some closure on some of this. Well, like one of the things I'm looking at is the the chart with the numbers to kind of figure out um, what effects we're having in the buffer zone and when whether we're losing ground or gaining ground. Um, in terms of impacts. Yeah, I'm going. Right. I don't know if you want to see it or talk about it's it. It's probably I, easier if you just put it on the screen, yeah. Because right, I mean, I I view that we're somewhat, we're gaining at this point, but yes, so I just view it for what? I mean, you know, if we're, if we're looking at disturbances in the, buffer zones and you know the driveway we're decreasing a bunch of that area in the 50 to 100 foot um we are we are increasing the roof area in the 50 to 100 um but on the other hand that that water is also being directed into the wetland um, so it's kind of a unusual situation. I mean, I guess on balance, like I, I liked a lot of the changes that were made in this, in this response, you know, moving, moving the fence out, moving the, um, the limit of lawn and the, uh, yeah, straightening things out to include more buffer zone. Um, I think they did a good job with that. Uh, that's not to say that we couldn't tweak things here and there, but I, I didn't feel, you know, I feel, I feel similar to Michael where this, the site, like a lot of the buffer zone is like pretty degraded. Um, and it's, it's pretty altered. <laughs> um, it is like in a semi natural state in some portions, but I feel like 
establishing more of the 50 foot as protected versus the 100 foot. Um, I, I feel like that 50 foot is more important than the, the 100 foot for this, this little wetland here. Um, I don't know, I just, I just think when you look at the numbers um, of disturbance that, you know, I, th I think we're gaining, I, I, I don't think we're gaining a ton, but I think it's better than um, the existing conditions. Um, okay. Does besides you two, you and Carol, does any of the other newer members have anything to put forth? I'm in agreement with that. Um, Steve? Well, I think I generally agree with Courtney. I, I, uh, also, there's going to be some net removal of invasives, and that's uh, uh, it's a pretty degraded property now. So I, 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 I'm inclined to uh, I don't know. I'll go along with Courtney. Okay. It's, yeah, it's this is a tough site. It's not not what we usually deal with. Right, exactly. So trying to move this forward because we can get down to the specifics of whether if I hear, um, I'll still say in terms of uh, pushing a little of the envelope in these little mar possibly small ways that might, um, this, this was something that I had brought up before about squaring this off a little bit here so that this area has more protection there given its proximity to the house and the lawn. Um, up here, I guess I'm, uh, I don't know if there's really gonna be all lawn in that area there. Okay, so to try to move this forward and see if we get it. If we focus on this side here, to you, John, I know this seems like a lot of nickel and diming of things there, and you and you guys have clearly moved, uh, made a lot of good gestures. I do want to acknowledge that. Um, whether uh, whether getting that area here more more amply protected continuously rather than this sort of little wedge, is this an area that you're willing to leave that we basically have as protected? Whether DeShang or John want to comment on that specific thing so we can get some changes in place that we can then move on from. John, you're on mute. Oh. Hi. So the comment for me. Um, no, I, I think, John, you, you can express, you know, our prior discussion is your primary, you know, you want to weigh, and that's what you did in this, in directing to Shane to make these changes, is that you were hoping that at this hearing you would have addressed the prior commission, you know, the prior concerns of the commission. So I, I think I can express that. We'd like to hear all the feedback now, make the changes and move this forward. So if if adding that additional piece will uh, uh, you know address some of the concerns, you're you're willing to do it, right? Okay. So I I think there were some there were some things like as as I went through the checklist and all of the responses that Dishink had um, to the comments that we made. I, you know, a lot of them, I was like, great, that's good, they did that. There were some, there was just, I feel like there was kind of like a punch list of things that I wasn't, didn't feel were quite there yet. So I don't know if we wanna go. We're gonna go through that. My okay. Is I just wanna get the aggregate areas defined and then we could go through the punch list of Okay, do we like this planting? Do we not like that planting? Are we done there? The number of plants and move through all the nitty gritty. This bigger picture is the thornier one. I just want to get through it to a place where we can then get down to all the little things there, whether there's a planting here or there, whether we need erosion control here or there, 
um, a little tweaking of, the, of some of the plans, the soil mix, that kind of stuff that we can walk through there. This is the thorniest part in a way. Um, and that, and I'm trying to strike what some I want, what I hear others doing there. I mean, and, and and some compromise, obviously, some member Carol probably would want more. Some others would be happy with this. Um, I just want to get through to something where we're going to basically protect this corner here um, more clearly so that uh, that's there. Um, with the limit, with the tree line, right, I'd like we're protecting the tree line. I would just move the monuments out to the thing there, or we'd have to go see what it looks like there. So basically, the tree line is protected. Um, it's not a lot there, and I would, and and put even a monument out there to basically get it so that this part of the of the buffer zone is protected uh, more clearly. Whereas now it's a little unclear how much has been altered and not clearly defended uh, or protected. Um, so that I would just sort of say that we can get this part there protected there. I can't remember what's here, to what extent that's already altered. And, um, and uh, you know, obviously it'd be nice if all of this area here was, was kept protected, uh, but I... Um, Michael, I'm getting, I mean, I'm just telling you, I'm getting a little bit confused now, so I can't imagine how John must feel. Um, I thought we were talking about the front Area protecting more of that buffer zone. Yeah, we are. Yeah, and I, now the tree, and that's the tree fine. Line, but I brought now up going... this area. I have this area and this area. Those are the two concerns I brought up personally, and I'm pushing it. And other members can outvote me and, and whatever else and say that I'm pushing too much. We've got agreement on that. I just would like to get, it's, I'm just moving whether essentially these kind of monuments get moved out to the tree line here so that essentially this treed area is protected. And even can I speak for a minute? Sure. Yeah. All right. So, so what we got here, we got a property that's been stagnant for a number of years. People are dumping tires over there. Right. You know, they're they're dumping trash on the property. It's an eyesore. The town has sign, signed per, petitions. There's members of uh, on the street that are signed petitions and have approached me. We we are and we are going no to no I know you I know you're okay. aware of it, but I, I I would like to I would like to speak. Uh, sir, uh, and and uh, with 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 all due respect, you know, uh, I, 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 you know, the meat is running for me uh, here, and uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to like, you know, equate uh, the wetlands here, which uh, I'm I'm actually almost doubling them in size, right? Is that accurate? And, no, it's and, not quite. It's not quite. Well, not well, way. not quite, but but. No, I get it. I, I understand. But the replication but, area is unusual and usually frowned upon. So it's you. So see, you have to understand that that this is what's going on here is something that's not often accepted because I, it's difficult. I respect that. I respect that. But we have a man-made well there too. That's it's creating some of the wetlands. Well, um, it's, it was there for other reasons too. The well itself didn't create a person. But the. But the the, the man-made well, we can concede that it, it's it's generating a lot of saturation. We it's can not clear that. Maybe that it is. That you probably had a wet area because it's- I would be area. willing to do a demonstration on it. Yeah, but okay, let's move. I think we could move on without worrying about that issue. I think we can reach a consensus without that, <laughs> rectifying that one, but go on. Um, now, I'm trying to do this here, you know, and I'm trying to get going here, um, uh, is, there, is there somewhere you, you, I can put the house uh, uh, adequately? I, I mean, do I have to tear down the barn? What, what do I need to do here? I just want to get through this and I want to be done with this. And, uh, you know, uh, I just, I'm, I'm running out of money. I'm, I'm you know, um, I'm, I'm hemorrhaging money here. I'm trying to get through this. And, uh, you know, okay. it's, it's cost me, it cost me a lot of money. I can understand. Hopefully uh, it'll be worth it all in the end. But we have our we have our commission responsibilities that right that unfortunately go otherwise. Um, but okay, I'd like to get back to resolving this higher level thing, and then we could just go run down the checklist of stuff. 
So this this does come back to the responses and the the questions that we had, the requests we had sent out, and one of them was to move things to the tree line, which they did in part of it. But like you said, it's not why I don't know why the markers are, um, you know, set off of the tree line over here. If if that's not an important area for future uses, I would just suggest moving those markers out. Um, it's not nothing new, as she said. It's not it's not something we hadn't brought up before. We're just I, that's I'm just going through what the comments we sent out and and the responses we got. And like I said, I think a lot of this was on target, um, but there's just a there's a few things that I would want to see different. Um, Carol, Carol may feel differently, but. I actually really more had a question. Is our under, is the, should we understand that the markers over there that should be along the tree line to the left as we're looking at the screen, that they're basically saying that um, they're protecting the wetlands, but not the tree, what's to the left of the tree line. Is that correct? Like how would a homeowner interpret it, I guess, is what I'm wondering. It's there. Usually it's up. very clear in because there's like a lawn and then there's a marker. This is a little harder to know how it would be interpreted. Well, there might be a lawn there. We don't know. They they're putting limit of lawn there. So there might That's be a lawn. lawn no, the, the the comment says that lawn moved to the limit of the tree line. And we will not request to move the left monument. Dishang, are you saying the that the we there's going to be lawn three more of markers uh, or monument to the to the right hand side? And we did at the three. The three is new. The one on the left, you go read right. your comments was it, not was not requested. No. I just need to clarify. No. I had All brought right. it up at a previous meeting. Can we, protecting can we this. stop? So I have the up. comments right here. I will I will read you. Or whatever it is, whatever the comments are, we can go back and forth what was yeah. and wasn't. But Wetland the, markers brought up to protect more of this. The limits of the existing tree shrub line. Right. It's so not, it's not a big deal. Yeah, I, I don't think it's, I think we're fighting, we're or not fighting, discussing okay. something that can Fine. be reached can agree on. here. Right. Yes. So we're yeah. going to move let's, the monuments out to the tree line. Okay, okay. let's just move on. Like let's Carol said, on. that there's usually a limit of Fine. undisturbed where we want the homeowner to be like, okay, I can do my lawn or whatever over here and not go beyond. Okay, so this will be, the, the monuments will be moved out to the tree line here. With the last one being here at the tree line, we're at the end of our jurisdiction here, and that that's protected, and okay, there'll be done. protection here coming along here, cr creating that sort of cutting off this triangle here. Moving okay. on, okay. okay. I want to go to the next list in the in the work to be done here. Um, we have you have the fence. You'll have the monuments, the the planting of this buffer zone, before we get to the replication, the planting of this buffer zone here, we had, now it was nice, I appreciate, we all appreciate that you move the fence out to give a real buffer, some buffer zone to this wetland here. Um, and question is, the planting plan here, we appreciate the trees, that's good. We had talked about whether to plant the berm and whether it gets planted here, whether this is an area that could be since it's inner buffer zone, whether it could be planted with, often we get plantings of shrubs in the, in the inner buffer zone to create there. What exactly is the, could the, the landscaping plan for essentially this area in here? Um, and whether the buffer zone could be planted in particular to make it hold up, I don't think the water demands, as you put, that the shrubs don't have to be so big, as opposed to just helping to keep the berm defined as well as intact. That whether some smaller shrubs could be put on the on the berm, um, for those reasons, it's also better quality buffer, and it's right next to the wetlands. And no, whether any no, shrubbery it, here could be done or what, so we can just clean up this area uh, here in terms of what we do. Yeah, Mike, I forgot to mention on. So as like an engineer, not just a wetland scientist, we all know 
this form is created for retaining water. You don't want to put any woody plants on your detention pond uh, embankment because the roots, the woody roots is going to not just, uh, uh, they will create a water leaking. Okay, so that's not, uh, I, I'm not going to do it. And the reason okay, because well, I'm a design you engineer, your point. I, ha I have anything to anything more. I'll stop you there. Okay. I see you made your point, whether I could accept that, whether okay. other people are okay with that. And we can move the trees to the other side. If you're looking on the trees, the existing trees, their crown coming to so close to the wetland, they're going to so play that. You don't huge. have to say anything more about that. We, I just wanted to go through this list and I would, I, I could relent on that there. I just want to get clear what we're putting in an order of conditions for what's going to be the, 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 the planting of, uh, of this area here because um, that whether it's that you, you, you've done you've done shrubs in the in the in the wetland area resource often like this area here and here do we want to have some shrubs there to basically fill in the vacuum from all the invasives management and cleaning up that you that we appreciate is going to be done that what's what's going to be put here to basically uh go there to do that i we've often had some sh some shrubs as well as i think we i can't tell which mix you've specified for that area or not um we, we specify why the flower seed mix and with the trees because we believe when the trees growing up and that they will shade that area so that's a, that's what our uh, expectation and okay. so, so we can maintain some kind of meadow field with the shrubby wetlands. So it's probably a combination. We are talking about some, when you were talking about wildlife, you want some kind of edge effects. So the wildlife ha habitat have many functions. So, so factors, so like a water resource and edge of traveling. And okay. so we have, yeah, that, that's what we are expecting. I just that's want to come back. Talking. I'm going to stop you so we can move through the list. Mm -hmm. um, of that, so this area here basically is going to be some sort of wildlife seed mix that's appropriate that um, that I think is specified somewhere, but we'll have that there, and we'll so it's basically an herbaceous layer that will get mowed once a year. No, I don't. I don't even. We don't We're not mowed at it. all. No. Okay, so it's unmanaged. Okay, good. A nest sun invasive species during the two year right, morning. Yes, we would time. like that kind of selective manual pulling, but okay. So there'll be a seed mix put in place there and who knows what seed stock will come back. There'll be some selective invasives management manually in that area. Okay. Do any other commissioners have two cents about that area? Okay, we can come back to it all, but this is gonna be, I just wanna get this in the order of conditions. Um, I'm going to move on, um, and Joyce, you can always chime in as well. Uh, we like the runoff, uh, let's see, we like the way you've done the roof runoff, or at least I do, um, and I know some others do. The, uh, the vegetation, before we get to the actual soil stuff and the replication, one issue on the number of tree bushes and, uh, and shrubs is that you've reduced the number from 30 to 20 based on some spacing, but that the plantings in the areas reduced to basically eight by eight, whereas in the plan here, they're six by six. I'm not quite sure. Let's see, was it here? Um, here. Um, in terms of just the species, whether people comment on the species, uh, there before we actually get to how they, what's they're going to be planted into. Um, and the spacings here, we're talking about six foot on center. Six foot on center, which is a number we've often used too, um, leads to more plantings um, than the 11 and the 19 here, given the square footage. It's a very simple calculation. You have 641 square feet 
of new divided by 11 shrubs, it's only 60 foot a square foot, that's basically eight by eight. Whether we wanna just get them, whether I think whether this would be more functional if we keep to the six by six, what people think about that. Mike, if I can do a quick clarification short. So as I explained it, so this is a groundwater recharge wetlands. I was trying to reduce it is because I don't want to add in suddenly too many woody plants to compete it to, to totally uh, flunk the, the, the replication. So we put the, uh, the trees shaded there. And uh, if you look in the guidelines, they, they actually have a 10 foot shrubs. So we put five and six, so we can kind of clump in a little bit. We don't probably well, no, want no, to- all, all I'm commenting, the five or six is all right. It's just that that doesn't equal the number of, of push that, that when I just do the aggregate calculation, that, that six on six is, you would have, you would have closer to, uh, we would have uh, overall, um, there's about 17, let's see, 1200, 1800 square feet. And if you divided that by just even 36, you would get, not that we need to get that dense, but 1800 square feet of the wetlands. Um, God. Uh, so can we take the shrubs that were removed in this version of the plan and plant them between the berm and the fence? Cause I, I still, I don't, usually when you have a nice buffer zone between like a landscaped lawn area and the wetland, you know, you need some like filtering effect and it, it's not just like an abrupt. Well, it's a meadow here. They're, they're, they're trying to leave it unmanaged, starting with the, with the mix. Stuff, stuff will grow up. That's why, right, sometimes we have a few shrubs planted in here, but I think given the seed mix and then what's probably in going to be in the... Well, and the seed mix, I, that shouldn't be a wildflower mix. That should be a conservation mix, right? Okay, well, that's what we got to get down. Let's get to this. Let's get this resolved. Um, do Carol, Joyce, who might have some other expertise, weigh in so that we well, can... I agree this. with Courtney. Um, just saying a, a wildflower mix is really, uh, it, it's really very difficult to grow. The conservation seed mix or even the erosion control mix uh, give you a wider variety of more uh, perennial stabilization. Um, you can mix the wildflower seed mix in with the conservation mix, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call for just the wildflower mix. Yeah, we had that option there. So at all as you approve. So because we don't really know, we cannot read your mind at the same way. Okay, fine. Right. So we're gonna okay. do some mix. You would like yeah. to see the wild. Let's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Put in the some order. Mix. We said yeah, wider flower or conservation okay. you see mix all as approved. So you guys can pick. I don't think I have okay. a preference that much. So the question coming back to whether I still um I just want to get the numbers and locate of these of the of the shrubs done in the sense that um so courtney you're bringing up the idea of whether we whether you whether this buffer zone here is more than just conservation seed mix and wild seed that is just left unmanaged you want to see more there is that what you got what you brought up i mean that's that's typically what we've done in the past Okay, right. One small point. By all means, chime in. I can't see everybody. Okay, uh, Steve. Uh, I assume that's still a little wet there. It just might factor into what you actually plant. I assume it's not some things that might be in a typical mix might not grow well there. But I, I'm not. I don't know what it is exactly. What the site is like there specifically. Right. Well, there's supposed to be this survival over a couple of growing seasons. So if things don't work out, then they have to fill in stuff. So there is the way it's worded is that there is some survival there. Uh, Michael, I, I would also, I, I liked Courtney's idea. I think that maybe also outside of the wide earthen berm between the limit of lawn and wide earthen berm to the left, creating, you know, using these shrubs to create a a more natural 
um, landscape there that would also contribute leaf litter rather than clustering well, them you all. have the, the tree line is here you have the tree line is overhanging is that the tree line this because, wavy line here so yeah, maybe yes. below it right you're talking about here or here yeah or here? no there you will have a load of leaves from the from, from those yeah, oaks I, I guess to me right i feel like it's close enough to the tree line that i'm less worried about the leaf litter than just a whether i mean i'm tempted to think that well, just, and it's back. just enriching it with the native shrubs i mean they spring up at the edge of my lawn right under the oak trees and that's where you get you know that's what i would think that if this is unmanaged these areas stuff will spring up and grow uh, that i feel like the fact that it's going to be unmanaged will from my point of view that this all sorts of things will grow and regenerate here and yeah, but I think it's more likely to be invasives, whereas right. if you put in the natives, then it's, you know, you'll get those. Yeah, but uh, what few? Question is whether we, okay, let's let's get to something here. Do you have issues with putting in some shrubs here or here to make it a better quality buffer zone and a little better competition with invasives? Well, we said we're going to cut the invasive out. And uh, we'll, so during the two year, we will monitor. That's why the, the dense ground cover is actually probably better preventing invasive species to grow rather than to a uh, few scattered uh, shrubs, to be honest. So that, yeah, that's just my I, opinion. I could go either way on this. Let's just, let's just decide on whether, um, just decide on whether we want to get some shrubs along the edges here. Uh, this is the edge that I was more concerned because you don't have the berm there. Um, to me, I was thinking more just around here because I see the tree line is there too anyway. I could go either way. I just want to come to uh, to some point here. Sorry. as a For two years, you were I wear my own thoughts as well as just trying to move this forward. Well, right. I, you know, I would say in my yard where I've done a lot of native plantings that the best way to prevent the invasives is to plant a combination of native shrubs and native perennials. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about a conservation seed mix. And I don't think that's going to create a dense ground cover. So I think it is a good idea to put some native shrubs in those areas. Do you think what kind of perennials, what would do dense? You know what does really dense is goldenrod. Right. Is that so we have some sort of it's less of a shrub than we want a different herbaceous. We want to add to the herbaceous mix, something that gets the goldenrod. And what what does that? What gets Joe Pie Weed a goldenrod? Yeah, you know, I agree. Well, Joe Pie Weed also. How do you get that? How do we specify that? Is that part of a mix? So that's going to probably come up anyway. Yeah, um, but, you have to put it in the mix for sure. OK, so with the mix to that area is going to be the conservation seed mix, wild seed and some sort of goldenrod, what do you call those? Goldenrod and- Well, just uh, goldenrod that are best adapted to wetlands. We want goldenrod and the uh, the other shrub, the, the other grass. Okay. Joe pie wheat, Joe pie wheat. We already wheat. added into our uh, actually transplanting. We can transplant some into that, okay. that area, right. you know? Okay, so we're gonna specify that kind of mix of plantings there in this area here. And then moving back to this, to the wetlands thing there. They have 20 shrubs and they have 30 shrubs in about the 1800 square feet. It's, that's a, because uh, we often work in aggregates for everybody. <clears throat> 1800 divided by the, uh, I guess, it, I think it's 30 that you have, or 20, you have 20, oh, what is it? 30 uh, is 60. Okay, overall, I guess that's about an eight by eight. The, uh, and that's all I'm getting at, Deshang, is that it's an eight by eight on center, roughly on average for the whole site. Doesn't have to be more than enough. enough. I, I can change in that number. So, because if you look at later on when we read the, the guidelines, the, the guideline actually recommend eight to 10. So, we, okay. we probably. What do people want? Okay, the people happy with the eight by eight? Um, spacing on that and the 30 shrubs in that area? Joyce, Courtney, Carol, anybody else, Steve? Well, the, if you plant 30 shrubs, at least um, you'll have a better chance of not having to replace 
if, if some of them die out, you'll have a well, better. No, well, I'd actually like to have one of the issues is that I would like, since this is a wetland area and wetland replication, right, I guess I would like to have more because I would like to have either a higher survival rate, because we're not just talking about the buffer zone, something like 90%. Or you or you or you over or you plant more than the thirty, which is the eight by eight. I can live with the eight by eight average. Whether we uh, whether you plant an extra uh, five or ten more that so that the survival rate we could keep it at seventy five percent. If you want to keep it at that, um, I have another wide idea, but just throw it. Okay. Sure, I mean, just maybe throw it we out should, there. Let's go. Maybe we can take in the shrub, put it in the buffer zone, leave the wetlands as the current, like a meadow type. So we are changing the whole thing. We were trying to offer some, was not really trying to change in the, uh, really the char fully characteristic of the wetlands uh, exist to start with. So, but uh, right now we're trying to push into almost like into a more, much more dense than the shrub wetlands. Okay. I, see, you know? I see where you're going. I'll stop you there and say to everybody else, the idea of moving the shrubs into the buffer zone more and whether uh, we still, whether we still want some shrubs in there, but whether the shrubs are being moved around here to the area here, maybe this, I don't know if this supplementing here and that this stays with the herbaceous layer that they've put forth. Michael, the advantage <laughs> of the approach that DeShang is suggesting right now is, and I think this is a good idea, is that the areas that are of the wetland that are proposed to be undisturbed are probably better off left undisturbed. Well, they'll be and cleaned that, up. They have a, they need a lot of cleaning approach, up anyway, but right. Okay, go on. Besides, yeah, besides some cleanup of invasives, but this approach would minimize disturbance in, in the existing wetlands, which is, of course, what we want to do. I think Okay. a I lot of plantings is going to be a lot of disturbance. I could see well, moving towards that. The others think, what is Steve and Courtney or others, Joyce? Well, a lot of the existing wetlands are invasives, aren't they? And there are a lot of invasives in there? No, just, just some uh, uh, new European backgrounds, but not, not like in the- They would pull areas. out all the invasives and hope that the natives that are there will continue and they will keep pulling out the invasives and see whether the natural seed stock that's there will slowly take over. Um, okay. I'm finding this idea appealing too. Um, Joyce, Courtney, Matt, Kurt. That's fine with me. I mean, let's just move on. Uh, Joyce. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's fine. Finally, I mean, it's right now. It's a, a wet meadow, and he was trying to change it to a shrub. Something. Yeah. I, I don't disagree with that as long as the shrubs are dispersed out throughout the fifty foot, right? Um, and they still would have a survivability requirement. Right. Exactly. So we would come up with number of shrubs here. If we want to keep this area, whether this area here, and then we can look back here, whether we find what the area is of this, this is a tree line, so there's probably room here too. Whether we basically, uh, I guess this area looks somewhat comparable to this. That were, I mean, in the replication area, do we, uh, so we're going to move in the actual original buffer zone, we're now going to have essentially the original, invasives, the original wetland, we're going to clean up, we're going to get rid of the invasives and do the kind of ground cover that you know, we're, we're going to, whether we do some sensitive fur, do we do any of this ground cover in that area? Yes. Okay. So we will do the oh, ground cover in that area and move so, and not do the shrubs. So the, the, Herbaceous, those three species would go in there <coughs> with a, a conservation seed mix, take out the wildflower seed mix. Right. Um, just to be gone. And then uh, and then just take the shrubs and move them. You may or may not want to, you may want to change what the shrubs are if you feel that the soils outside there are more well drained than that area of the wetland. Thank you. Right. Well, the question is whether we want to tell them that or we could say that uh, well, the, the plan for these, the choice of this can be 
finalize later, like we've done in other places. But we just I, want to get the numbers down. So the subs I picked to saying the subs I picked were more fact related. You might want to pick some that are a little bit more. Um, I think let's put it this way. I think between now and the next meeting, Deshang and I can come up with a. All right. Okay. We're moving on there. Okay. So we're going to come up with a, the shrub count here based on maybe it's a little denser to put out things there, whether it's the eight by eight. And we come up with a number of shrubs that are going here. This area, we've got the, it's going to be untouched, <clears throat> the, uh, with but basically adding an herbaceous stuff. The replication area is here. Then the big thing on the herbaceous going moving on, so one of the remaining big things is um, the whole soils, the idea that you feel that the loam on the existing site will be the appropriate soil mix to do. One of the issues we've had in the past discussion is that normally the soil mix that's put here is something that is a mix of something that might be a little bit at the bottom when you scrape away, you put in something that's a little less permeable and then something that's with a much higher organic content is what happens in a, in a replication area um, versus you're suggesting that you could just move any of the other loam on the site to here. Um, I don't think, uh, I don't know whether that's what you're thinking, Joyce, about that. So Michael, he, so he's gonna, so just saying, you're gonna take out the, the logs that run through that, that tip of the wetland, at, you know, cause there's, they, they laid down uh, logs in the wetland. So you're gonna take those out and then you're gonna utilize that whatever soils are in that wetland you're filling. Right. But you're gonna have to supplement that with something that's not just loam. You're gonna have to mix um, peat and, and loam to create a denser mix. Um, so that when you dig down, you're not just putting loam in, otherwise why change anything? You're going to have to supplement that mix with something that's a little less, that, that absorbs water a little better, doesn't filter it through so quickly. The, the on-site loam, from what I say, is so it's, a, it's a pretty uh, impermeable to the way that can sustain that wetlands. So if you look in there, actually, we're going to come up with a spec for the material that you're going to use to create that wetland soil. You're going to use what you can out of the wetland itself. Then there's a spec that you're going to use, just like you would for any other wetland. You don't just put loam in. You're going to put it. There's a spec for creating that material, and that will add that to the either the order of conditions or will ask you to add it to the plan. Yeah, yeah, we can add some, you know, okay. more probably compounds. Compost. So we will work out the specs for that soil, and that yeah. will be in the order or some way that you, that you have to come back to us to just get that approved, so we can move on. All right. So we'll get. I, wanna talk, I just want to go through my list really quick. Yeah. I also want to point out, not to take up time, but Deshang, I thought you did an excellent job in responding to all the comments, and I know it's been said before, but I wanted to say it also. You did a great job. Um, <laughs> So I uh, the roof infiltrate the roof runoff the outlet pipe the bubbling pot or whatever you call it on your plan you show it right next to the berm on your cross section you show it about seven feet from the berm and so I I feel that that outlet should be pushed as far into the wetland as you can even though you might be trenching um, into that wet because the farther you can get it in there. The, the better it's going to serve. We don't want it to just, if we get a storm, a strong storm surge, we don't want that to just go over the berm. Good point. No, that's no problem. We can extend it probably 10 feet in uh, you know, to, to uh, we just don't want to, uh, I was, when I was Joe, I was trying, so that's why we firmed it up. And uh, if we are putting in that, well, as long as the commission understand it's just temporary for the installation, we'll put it back, I, we can extend it. 10 feet into it, no problem. Okay. Um, the my other comment on you you keep zooming in on this plan when we're all looking at it, and that way we can see what this replication area looks like. When I talked about doing the one inch equals 10 feet, because you can't see the spot elevation on this plan 
when you print it out at a at the scale of the planet, a, it, it's one thing to say you're going to be there on site to do this, but your shrubs are even overlapping your spot elevation. So I I are you sure you know I have one here. It's so big. Of, I don't know if you can see my camera. I can see no problem on on this scale. It's really clear. I, my eyesight is very bad. I you know that. I, I even me can see it. I know nobody can miss it. To be honest, I, so up to print into the full scale. Why why can't we just like the whole thing doesn't need to be one to ten? Like why? Little, I just would assume that there would be a call out or just a zoom in of that one area. Or the two areas, the two replications. Yeah, with the detail. That's all we want, because uh, yeah. if just, you guys want to meet at the town hall, I bring a full scale. No, you, after you no. see that, you're really thinking it's not legible no. or not clear. I, I have, I have done so many plans, and even DEP required ten to forty. We, the twenty is such a small. This is not really a big piece of. Plan. Okay, well, the wetland replication guidelines say, you know, one to, to ten to one to whatever, and the. 40. The commission would like one to ten for that area. Right. Is it just for that size? For size, I'm Courtney. I'm not trying to. If I see this one have a valid point, I'll be too honest. I provided any answers you guys wanted. I'm just saying, just for this one piece, you cannot see it. If I cannot see it, I will really, really will appreciate if I'm not trying to win anything. It's just, I don't feel it's wasting paper. You want me to put another sheet? It's a, it's a, it's a, to me, I think it's not really a valid uh, point to me. I look at it, I, I see that, I say, how can people missing that reading? I, someone, I have a full scale. Someone, else, read right away. someone else needs to be able to read it exactly. You can't just assume like, you'll be there to know every, and direct every little thing. like. It has to be a record. It has to be a record. Like <laughs> it's just. I, it's I, not. I just Look how huge the shrubs. The, what you're showing on the screen, to saying, is about one inch equals ten feet. Yeah. That, it's just that little, and it's just the just the replication area. So so you're blowing it up to an area now that we can. It might even be a little bit more than one inch equals. Well, I guess where do we? I mean, I just. I mean, I'm not gonna. That's my comment, and it's really. I that's just a comment I made. That it's up to the commission to. Um, Whether we need more detail on because the, the, the problem comes, here is actually so right. This is a one foot contours. Most of the people, if you look in all the approval commission from anywhere, it's a two foot contour requirement. So this is, and we also not in on top of one foot contours. We provided spot shot. I mean, I think I think it's like excessive. I don't think any contractor for for make him even follow to that detail. To be honest, I'm not I'm not kidding. So this is a wetland replication. This isn't just. I, I gotta still it to be. Well, I, I have done hundreds of wetland replications. Okay, guys, we got to move on because this issue of blowing this up, whether you just you, you don't have to regenerate any paper. You could just blow it up on you can just blow it up here now it's blown up here that i just did it um and the question is is um what more detail are we going to get that I, i'm more concerned about what detail we need here because essentially this 189 here if you could see my cursor this is your estimate of what's going to be an action just cut what about 10 inches of a cut. Yeah, because that's where you think- Any contract can read that, okay? Well, plus on, uh, in, in this case, I think the on-site work is, I've gone back and forth of whether we need, what more we need versus what's gonna be just so much of a field thing. Cause I wanted to, uh, I wanted to change your uh, your schedule of thing there that, that essentially given some of the little, fact of how much it's going to be an art of the site work there. Um, oh crap, uh, excuse my language. Um, I can't tell whether here. Moving on to comments. Um, that designed to mark excavation depth replication area according to the plan. 
chest area uh, that here. Now we add that this is reviewed by the conservation agent as a way to just get make sure that we're all on the same page and we don't have problems later with, com with the compliance thing here. That um, uh, and that we're clear about what the areas are basically in, in four and in seven. Um, that we add in that the conservation agent, this makes sense to you, Joyce, since we never talked to this, that this is where we can go and have a site visit and review and see that everything makes sense without all the detail that we're talking about, that we just put in the effort to verify that it's making sense while they're doing it. For all the plans that we have and we could talk about, which I'm less concerned about at this point now, other than I'd rather ha interject whether that's okay with the applicant and you, uh, that the agent just comes there to review what's being done there to make sure that it's we're not gonna come up with questions later. No, I agree. Actually, I appreciate that. Actually, there are two professors there so walking out in the field is much better than you, you will right now ideally put on the plan because I have done hundreds of wetland replication. I always have to be there to do some micro adjustment in the field because right. you cannot be 100% be able Screw to describe any construction project whatsoever. Does that make sense to you, Joyce? Yes. Okay. I'd be willing to not go for, I don't know, Courtney or others feel like I'm willing to just, I'd like to interject the agent being part of that process so that that way we can make sure it's making sense. I, I think that's fine, but I don't think that that removes the burden of, you know, doing the plans the way they should be, you know, per the replication guidelines. Um, so what I, is it that you want to, when you look at the scale here, do you want more detail than this? Well, so where's the soil profile? Where's the that's soil? A different, that's a different issue. That's okay. That uh, is different from a different, from a, from a map like this. The soil profile is, a different question of whether that's again something that's going to have to be looked at on site and that's part of why that that he wants to go down is that when you're on the site and you do that's part of why I, rather than even the soil profile it's part of step four is with it mark the excavation depth in the replication or according to the plan and adjust in the field that's where we'll have the two cents of What's the, what soil is going to be taken away? And Joyce and already went over the idea of what's the soil mix and profile that's going to be put in there and that they will work on what that wording is. Number eight. Number eight is the profile. To, so the major critical one is the talk to the, the, the guideline right. that requires 10 inch. So we, we have talk to 15. Yes, so but you have loam here. Point. This is going to get changed based on the, the points that Joyce made and that you'll work on this. Right. Eight will also be changed. Four and seven will include the agent. Eight will be changed to get the, the stuff there. This, this will be changed for planting. All uh, that plant shrubs and replicate and mitigate in buffer zones. This will be changed so that do the herbaceous layer in the replication area and do the shrubs and the trees and the uh, buffer zone. So this will be, this will be cleaned up. Um, I don't know. Does that... I'd lay your concern, Courtney. I don't know. Go on. Let's let's keep okay. going. I can I ask a quick question? And it's from that same checklist. It said it that it should show the con a one to ten plan, including easily identifiable landmarks, identifiable landmarks, contour lines at one foot intervals, which are shown here, and locations of soil test pits. And vegetation plots. Um, okay. I guess the question might be to Joyce: Should there be soil test test well, pits? I mean, the soil test pits are there. We already mm -hmm. done in the field. Yeah, it's all saying. Just let her answer. I'm asking Joyce. They're they're there after the fact, typically, just to see that the what, that the profile is working, that you have the water. But I think, and this is such a a small area that we're creating. We'll know that it works 
through the two growing seasons by what's actually growing. So I don't think that with this level, this is not that level of replication area that we need to go to that level of detail. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on, we've done the markers, more buffer grading. Um, one of the questions I have is erosion control. is whether you have erosion control all the way in a much bigger area. I'm concerned with all of the work being done. I'm gonna shrink this a little bit. I, I guess I have to go back to the construction sequence as to when this whole work here is gonna fit in with all the work that's going on here, where you have the limit of, um, let's see, the erosion control is specified and some other. So the replication area should be done. That should be one of the first things that gets right. prepared. I don't know what their construction sequence is at this point of the season, but typically for a project, the replication area gets done first. Um, right, and and I guess this sediment and erosion control is the yellow here, it goes out here. And, I, and I'm concerned about that we need to protect this area here from all of the work that's gonna be going on here in the grading. Right. So Deshane, can you can you put that re a replication, I mean the erosion control across the where the fence is going? And then you're gonna do interior to the wetlands when you do that work, there'll be other erosion control, but at least in big picture, um, he's gonna have to get in and out of that area. But once it's finished, he could put the erosion control across the front of the berm. We've been there if there's some removal, depending on how they do it, Dad. Yeah. We don't we We'd like it to be done first, but that I think we need to have erosion control here. Yeah. So okay. that no, this I, I, area I, I, doesn't get damaged at all. When right. You do, I agree. Know. Whenever whenever that replication is done and the fence installed, we can roll a, a row of uh, uh, erosion control line, just follow the fence line. So then when we were doing the house, it's not going to wash into it. So because there is a little pitch toward that direction. So I, right. I, I we have no problem. I think okay, it, I think and if any work plan. starts here before this is all done, before the fence is in, uh, we want the erosion control in place here before any of the work starts here. Right. Um, okay, right. so you agree there. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's common sense. I cannot refuse that. <laughs> okay. Wow, for once I came up with something you call common. Uh, if there's any fill, there's the normal fill regulations that we have. Uh, that you've seen before, if you're bringing in anything from the outside, um, since a lot of the area is in the buffer zone, so that you'll we're going to put the fill regulation in the uh, order. Um, replication. I think we've gone through. We got. I think that we have the soil profile right. You're going to work out with Joyce what that soil mix and profile is going to look like. So we have that cleared there and we're going to be part of the process to make sure that this replication goes all right um i think i'm through with my list of stuff um what do other people want to add in here is there is there a cross section i didn't i didn't see a cross section a second sheet for what with this, the soils and everything, right? Well, no, with the soils to come or the soils? The, the, car, the cross the, section of, you know, th through the wetland to see the profile and the, the soils. No. Of what yeah, if it's in our report, we, we can we can take in that log and uh, put it here. In the, rep uh, the wetland uh, delineation report has a soil, typical soil profile. Yeah, but, uh, but if, you, if you want it, I can, I can, yeah, I can, can, I can throw it here, yeah. but I don't know. It, it helps anything because we're not going to uh, alter that wetland so no right. like a cross section of the wet, the replication area don't, i mean don't you usually provide a cut through of what it looks like what it will look like is that what you're talking about existing or what it will i just said replication area <laughs> right all right, so you are, you are talking about the cross. So we have a cross section, but we probably can can expand a little bit. So on the second right. sheet, we what? already have the profile. Okay. And that yeah, I think I saw that cross section. Is it on the 
yeah, the second sheet, detail, including the drains and everything. Yeah. Wait, you're talking about the second sheet in this file? No, you shrink it, shrink it, shrink it on the top. So, so, so address what Courtney's saying, what you could probably do is just, just amend that cross section to show where groundwater is now. Um, yeah, you know, this one. You think okay. Oh, you're, oh, you're talking about this? Yeah. Just, you know, just add an elevate, you know, just how many, you know, where below that you, you feel groundwater is going to be. Um, no, the groundwater is, as I said, is, is the ground. I'm just saying, I, that I don't, I get it, but you can show where it is. So it's no surprise later on. So it's on the surface. I, I was. <laughs> you guys work on that, Joyce, with him. Okay. Anything else? Well, the one thing I thought was odd about that cross section is it shows it, it as level when in fact it's on um, sloping ground. I don't know if Joyce, if you think that makes a difference that it should be representative of the change in elevation. Well, I mean, this isn't really a crop. A, this isn't really a cross section. This is a cross section AA, and it's not really. It's, to your point, you're correct, Carol. He's just showing what the berm is in relation to the fence in relation to the you know the shrubs and the discharge it's not really an actual profile through the you're right you, courtney and carol is correct it's, it's such a shallow profile <laughs> through the wetland but it's but it is giving you a representation of what um kind of what it uh, potentially can look like right. so Joyce, is your recommendation that we that there should be more indication of the cross sections because it's being replicated. So how much depth of loam and things like that? The, the way he's described it in his, again, this is a smaller replication area. So the way he has described it in his notes is that it's a lot of this is going to be, it's replications are kind of an art more than a construction. So it, what he's saying is he's, we're going to go out into the field. They're going to do some some exploration as they pick the elevation they're going to go down to it may not be the spot elevation it may be below the spot elevation um but maybe not showing a cross section right now for the level of what he's doing here is as productive as um i might have suggested it would be so it maybe it's you know if he's if we can be sure that Deshang is going to be involved in this project and not another person, that's where we have the problem. If he's got all this knowledge about how he wants to create this, if he's not the one that's actually doing the oversight, if if this project gets sold and someone else builds it and they bring on a different person, they're not going to be able to replicate what he's saying. But if he's here, then then he'll know exactly what he wants to do. Does that argue for having a more detailed cross section? Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess, you know, there, I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping we could specify by specifying the soils that thing that I'm hoping that the soil profile that we're talking about, that we talked about earlier, that specifying what, what the layers are going to be in terms of getting that 10 to 15 inches of replication with the more organic matter and to the more impervious that that description and how deep that will go will then drive even for the future if he's not there what's going to have to be excavated here to put in that type of soil mix in place so let's just, if, maybe if i could say well I'm, I'm making that as a comment and maybe we can see if Deshang and i can't come up with something Yes, I would hope we, because we need that soil profile, even in terms of just the mix of soils and to what. I agree. No, I agree with the mix of the soil mix and the soil specifications, but um, I'm sure we can, I'm sure he can come up with something that will work for. Okay. Yeah, as, as one thing, I think adding the agent uh, involvement in the critical steps that even I'm not here. I think that can be implemented as far as a profile is really here is just too simple profile. It's a top 12 inch to 15 inch brick loam with the branding, some organic matters to improve it. The bottom underlining is the sandy soil, is a Windsor soils, which is very permeable sand. That's it. That's there. That we, we, you cannot asking us or, or it's a, to, to, to reventing 
God's creation there, <laughs> what it is, you know, that's what it is. It is there. We are not we are not changing that layer. We are just changing the top 15 layer and uh, with the uh, branding more organic to help retain the water. And by adding more water resource there, I don't think you, uh, I'm there, I will do some micro uh, adjustment, just like odd. If, if you can draw, everybody can draw like- Okay, uh, but you know. it's, I'll just stop that right. I'll just say that right, that these areas, you'll have what the soil composition is supposed to look like in the depth and the on-site stuff will have to be excavating, excavating to a level that will be able to put in that mix. If right. it's 12 inches, you'll be here, you'll see what the contours are on the edge, and then you'll take it up, take away enough soil to put in what it is we need. That's why I'm backing off myself on some of the detailed topo or site stuff here, because I think when you're on site for each of these areas, if you need to go down a foot or so on a fairly, on a, on a level area, whatever that depth is, you take it out up to that area, and then you'll be putting in the mixes in these areas. That's correct. Yeah, you so you even know that. So you don't, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, Everybody can know that. So. so I feel like that once we have those things specified, that the on-site work is what will drive it. Because the nuance of whether it's, you have to take out eight inches or, f or 13 inches. The topo right. was so imprecise. Right. Okay, what else do we have? Okay. So can you see? If you are you looking to see where your shrub uh, lay, your shrub symbols are, they're on top of your spot elevation, for both the uh, um, near the stone wall, back there, and they'll come forward where it says uh, um, Michael movie cursor over where the stone wall is at the rear. So this that symbol right there, the the elevation spot elevation is covered by your shrub. The X one ninety here. The now go, now go forward. Now, yeah, and over here, straight forward, it's uh, the high bush. So blue once we get rid of the shrub thing, we could just have a printout with these things here. Okay. Oh, we'll make sure pop up that number. We we'll probably add sure. in like a little background so that the number can be more popular. Okay, that, that, that'll yeah. be good. We'll do okay. that, and we could see that. Then we'll have that numbers because yeah. then we could see what it is. Oh, yeah. Here no, you, I, I you're actually that. having grading. Is this a grading thing? The 189. Yes. And uh, and then the next level is there. What other grading is going on beyond here? Where's the... You're 188. Missing, my last point is that it seems to be missing some of the grading that's no, going on. No, 188 is to your right. This one, I see 180, 188 here. Yeah, and then go but to 180. existing, but that's not a solid line like that is the grading. No, move it, moving further to the right. Shrink yeah. it, shrink it. Shrink in the, the figure. You can see 188, the right corner. I see that. So it's just a very flat yard. Right. 189 this 188 to 188 to 187. So that, right. So that basically you have 188 here. You don't have, here's your 188 going this way. Yeah, that's it. It's a flat. That's basically the yard is a very flat yard. Yeah, but, but it, Hold it, it on. Are, like you, it, are you putting in fill here to get to what? Because this is 188, here's 189. Yeah, 187 is about two feet of fill. And the one foot of fill, that's 188 to, to probably 188.5. Where does the grading go it's, out in here? Is there grading here? Yeah, there's a grading. It's, there's just one foot difference where you are looking at where your cursor is between 189 and the 188. You can see he's put in the 189 there. Michael, it's kind of going up and down. And the earlier, the, the current lines, I think, are the 186 and 187. So that's where you get a couple feet of fill there. Right. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to understand that whether you're going to be putting in any fill, let's say, in this area. Yes. If you're looking at 180, not, not fill, it's probably some excavation, and then the water will drain to 180, 188. Because 188 is the, it's a co existing contour, we are not changing anything. You're okay. not changing any, I'll just be clear, separate from the wetland replication work here. Yeah. Are you doing any grading? No, 
that's okay. existing 188 from 189 to 188 it's just that it's, it, that's that's a no change so there's going to be the grading in here basically some minor grading there but the 188 is not changed michael can you pan to the um pull it to the left pull it to the left Just pan to the left a little bit well let me get down here if you want you want me to bring up i can probably this way so Maybe. just saying, if I'm looking at this plan right now, when you tie that 188 contour, the proposed contour to the existing 188, that effectively cuts off where from from the, the rest of it. Right. Is this graded? How is this? How are you grading this? You got you got your 188 going two ways. 188 to the to the right, and you will have a little bit that. So the 188. No, no, I'm just looking at what you're proposing here. Yeah. So you see your. You're taking that 188 and you're tying it to, um, to existing, right? But but now you have the existing going two ways. That doesn't work. No, no. There's no two ways. Above 188 is going to be a little bit higher than 188. So maybe you need to just add some spot elevations in there so we can see what it is. Okay. No, that's fine. It should be like probably a couple of inches. I mean, maybe a little. Okay. You can work on that with them. Okay. Um. Just trying to get clear because right, I don't see any grading there, but okay. Fine. We're gonna right now we're gonna you so we'll, based on this, Joyce and Deshang will create a new final plan based on all of the stuff we've talked about and revive it so that we have a new plan. An order of conditions will be drafted so that next week and we'll hopefully have it beforehand so that everybody can possibly look at it before the meeting so that it's just a matter of fine tuning it and then it's, we've done the bulk of the work tonight and that it shouldn't be, uh, unless some issues come up in between, which hopefully will be highlighted before in the next meeting, that uh, we can just walk through it, approve and feel comfortable with that and move forward with all of this. So I will, what's our schedule like for the next meeting? Are we moving into the same 745? Do we have anything else? Uh, we do have a new application. Um, and that will be uh, a quick one. That will be about a 20 minute one. So uh, if this goes, we have we put the budget back on for 715. That should be 15 minutes or less. All right. So, then, minutes, so if we do the other one, it's 725 even. Is it an RDA? Can what is it? The budget in 10 minutes? I'd like to think so. All right. Well, let's just say we do the if next If we don't meeting. do it in 10 minutes, we can continue it to later in the meeting. All right. Um, all right. How and much? so 725 would be enough to, what is it, an RDA? Uh, no, it's a, um, an ANRAD for the one on Coolidge? No, no. zero. Um... I've forgotten already. Yeah. It's the one where we move the septic, the house uh, outside the the buffer zone, so that they could get uh, uh, go do more soil testing. They have, remember they had the driveway in the buffer zone. Now mm -hmm. they're doing an ANRAD, so I just can't remember. Uh, but that one should go fairly quickly. So okay. we did that one at seven twenty-five. Yep. So we'll give that till uh, and then go seven seven forty-five for. Yes. Oh, and uh, does that work for Deshang, John? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, 745. And S, S the lawyer. I don't know your first name. Uh, Shana. Shana. Yes, that works. Okay. I move that we continue this hearing to. Uh, Actually, we might just do the ANRAD if you, we could decide where the ANRAD will go in at 720. Just, we could always move the budget discussion to later if we have to, but we move this. I move that we continue this hearing to 745 on December 15th, I believe is the date. Um, and then, uh, yes. Okay. Any, do I hear a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call vote. Michael I. Courtney? Aye. Carol? Aye. Matt? Aye. Kurt? 
Kurt signed out at nine. He had said in the chat he couldn't. Okay, fine. I'll see that. Uh, Steve? Hi. <clears throat> okay. Five zero. We're, we've, I think we've basically wrapped this up. Um, it's just a matter of putting it all pen to paper. Thank you for the perseverance over the last hour and 45 minutes or 47 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on. So, George, um, I will touch base with you. So, but based on what discussed, I probably should you want some like a, a, a draft, hopefully early next week or something. Okay. Okay. Good. Let's get this wrapped up. Um, moving on. I'm a little. Uh, uh, let's see. I've stopped cheering. Um, The one thing is we have to, there was a site visit for the uh, um, the 40B uh, project. Actually, it's not, I guess it's 40B, but it's done under a different, uh, it's not how, mass housing, this affordable housing project on Washington Street. Um, let's see. I don't I can't remember how many of you, uh, let's see, where is the plan here? Uh, oh no, doing the wrong one, sorry. Uh, Wynn Holmes. Now, that's right, I'm glad somebody's reading the chat. I do not read the chat during a meeting. Too busy. I'm, I'm doing the, the host stuff. Um, can't remember how many of you were at the, do we see? Do you see a site plan? Yeah. That's quite compressed. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess we'll see. I guess I made it too small. Michael, while you're adjusting that, I had that question to Joyce about whether this should be considered, whether the two Greenwood and Washington Street should be considered as one submission. Was there any? Yeah, it, it can't be sub considered as one submission because it's two separate types of projects. The one on Greenwood Street is will be um, standalone single family houses, and this is a uh, a rental rental unit. So it's under two separate uh, applications to the state. So e so even though it's the same property, the EPA yeah, it's doesn't. Two, it's basically one property, two different projects. Thank you for checking on that, Joyce. Um. Okay, the, uh, this is the project. I have to do one thing here, sorry. Um, this project, actually I might shrink it a little bit. So this is a uh, roughly a 39 or 40 unit rental with the parking here. Um, and I guess they're gonna put solar canopies here and whatnot. This is a septic field they're thinking of. Um, this is not, this is shy of, this is just some overall comments for the uh, for a, I forgot the name of the agency that deals with rental affordable housing in terms of comments, in terms of issues for, um, for us. And what this project means is that um, this is under the state regulation. So there actually would not be, uh, I guess we could, there's still the 50 foot when we go to the comprehensive permit before the uh, ZBA. Essentially at this point, their planned uh, activities and areas of our jurisdiction are where they're gonna put a well, it looks like, at some point here. 
which tends to be a relatively minor disturbance, even though in this area is uh, there's some areas where they could do it. So there's that well installation. And then they, they, this isolated vegetative wetland or possible vernal pool, they've actually stayed out of jurisdiction here for the most part. Um, the stormwater trench here is not sure what that actually will look like. Um, so there's going to be some temporary maybe disturbance here that could be changed. Michael, quick question going back to the is was that the vernal pool or was that the certified vernal pool or was it the ice? I think it might, I guess right. It might be the certified vernal pool, but um because there was another there were a couple of other things that looked like vernal pools, but Desheng argued were had did not show any signs of vernal pool critters. Is right. That is the area that we were. This is, a, this is what we were calling the vernal pool right there. Right. This is another place over here. That's this is that other project. So that's okay. So, okay, so this okay. was the one that he he did demonstrate their vernal pool. Right. This seems to be the vernal pool, although it right. still just has the hundred foot buffer zone. Um, so we have that here to be protected. They haven't drawn the limits of work, and this is the easement for a trail that goes through. So this they've avoided, there's relatively minor, just my assessment clicking. So essentially there's a lot of work in the outer buffer here, sorry. Um, and actually they've managed to stay out of the inner buffer zone um, for this wetland here. There's just a large amount of this, the stormwater basin, but basically there's a lot of impervious area that is created um, by this parking lot um, and things here. Uh, and I guess it's really just a parking lot, essentially. There's a small part of the building. So we do have this uh, area of maybe some thousand, few thousand square feet of that's the scale of 70 feet here. Um, 15. Uh, so this some thousands of square feet of, of outer buffer zone. As to what kind of comments we want to write for us to think about um, that this is a significant amount of buffer zone for this particular wetland area. Um, overall, as they sometimes look at, you look at average buffer zone for on a lot um, for the mean for this particular project, one could say that the buffer zone on the other side, it's it's seemingly unlikely it came up that there's going to be any activity in this buffer zone over here by these projects. Um, this is the applicant they actually asked me here about whether if they don't do anything here on this side in the buffer zone, whether this these houses could be approved with administrative approvals. Um, but I'm only getting at the fact that overall for this wetland area, um, there's at least a 50 foot, which is a common at the state level guidance of at least a 50 foot vegetated buffer, which will be maintained everywhere. And on and, and for most of the wetlands, even the 100 foot buffer zone is maintained except for this heavy impact along here as opposed to so which would take essentially most of the 50 foot buffer for this range well and all of that is mature trees i think oh yeah it's all well there's a lot of alteration oh yeah right they've done a lot of soil testing and things but it's basically natural buffer so there's a significant loss of natural buffer zone there, even though it's a it's a it's a modest part of the entire buffer zone on the entire this wetlands. Um, so that is to some extent the mitigating factor, um, including all the other wetlands over here. Um, oh, let's see here. These seem to be all 
relatively. I mean, there you have roads and other things protected there. Okay, so, and, and there will be an NOI for this that comes before us. I'm not sure, I don't wanna. Uh, Michael? Yeah. The one thing, like the last time we had a huge public water supply before us, um, like the one on Hunting Lane. Oh yeah, right. We, we did a bunch of uh, groundwater monitoring. If they're going to do well testing, right. If they're going to come to us for well testing. Well, yeah. I mean, at some point. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know if we want to go and, and look at some of that stuff that we went through. Yes, it is. All we could say, I mean, I would comment that, right, the wells on the surface don't do it, but whether there's basically a, uh, depending on linkages, between the uh, the, the groundwater, the sub the sub the groundwater, I forgot the term versus the bedrock that they're drawing from, that there could be some impact on the wetlands, on the groundwater at the surface. There's one impact that we have to watch out for, and that's and that's a general issue that I also will come up I assume significantly from the board of health even. <clears throat> is that this is a lot of, it's a lot of water usage in a shared resource that's constrained. The um, other thing I wonder about, Michael, is the septic, like the design of the septic system, because it's so close to that vernal pool, how much it's going to alter the chemistry of the water? Will it be adding significant nitrates? I mean, most septic systems, residential septic systems, um, you know, do put nutrients or extra nutrients from, from household waste into the soil. So I don't even, I know that this came up in the fields of Sherburne that we were looking at that. I don't know where we landed on how the state looks at that in a 40B, but this is, is a pretty big, you know, 40 units is a lot of units. Oh yeah, it's although the number of bedrooms is smaller than the fields. So this septic field will be smaller than the fields. Where it ended up with the fields is that since the system is outside of the 200 of is outside of jurisdiction here, that we actually had no we had no even when we appealed it and went uh, to an adjudicating board that the only recourse we have on the wetlands law is if we see impacts in the uh, in the area later that we could attribute to this, such as finding that kind of nitrogen sources or other chemicals that are connected with septic. That that's the only recourse we had. That at this level, we can only point out that the fact that there could be an impact on that area, but in our process, there's nothing much we can. As, as we found out after a significant amount of effort um, that uh, um, Michael question on that in the, in that order of conditions did we include I don't think we did include a requirement that the wetlands be monitored by the applicant is that and so I don't or maybe you know better whether we've actually gone back and monitored those wetlands at the Fields of Sherburne to see if there have been impacts after you know five years, put, whatever it's been. We could but put in the I, I guess I would bring it up for this one. Is that some you know looking obviously ahead that that might be a consideration? How to? Oh, yeah, it will be. It's what we did there, which we have to follow up on. We got the ability to just do testing in the wetlands. Well, the thing about that is, if we leave it to the commission, it may or may not happen. Whereas, I guess you know, if you build it into like a, a monitoring program that's part of the project, you can try to put it in there. I think last time we just basically couldn't get that accepted because it was it went to the state. Um, but whatever, we can bring that up as whether we get them to do it. Um, but that's an that's later on. I'm just yeah. trying to figure out what it is we want to do. 
because uh, this project's a year or so, this has to go through a lot of hurdles before it comes forward because of the way the financing is done under this. Because on, on a whole other level, this project, I find it personally attractive in the sense that it is, it goes deeper into affordability than many projects do. It is an affordable housing project that has also a significant number of units that are, I think it, what they call it, it's 80% of average mean income versus, and then there's units at 60%. So that- They're, the they're all is, affordable. They're all affordable, but they're, they go to a, deep, right. a greater level of affordability than projects yeah. have to have. And so I think it's, it's quite nice to see, even though the location, I'm not sure if those kind of for people at that income level will be appropriate, but the extent that they probably are people like that, that would do it that this presents a, uh, a set of houses that are particular, that are great, have greater affordability. And I laud the effort of the developer to try to pull that off. Um, Except well. that's not something we can really. Oh, that's not a comment. I'm just saying that this project I think has some good benefits for the town and for housing in general, even though it is in essence, the classic problem of a lot of resource use or we want the projects up on Coolidge Street where we get Natick water or Natick septic and Framingham water, this is gonna be a burden on our resource system because of the septic, the water use on a limited resource and a tremendous amount of septage going down right. to groundwater. So that it gives me pause, but I mean, I don't like it, but given the fact that this, we could, I'm not sure how much that's other people to say other than, uh, for our point, we could bring up the impact of the septic on the vernal pool and that, and it's the issue of the septage on the other wetlands too. I mean, right. it's not far from the other wetlands. We can Michael, the, the other energy. things, if you're, if you want to, the, if you're thinking of an initial feedback, I know that on the one over on Coolidge, there are questions of lighting. There's questions of runoff from parking. Um, right. There's going to have to be the stormwater runoff, right? Well, that's it. That's a good idea, Carol. Like, we don't, There'll probably be some site specific things, but we don't have to reinvent the wheel because we've well, had the stormwater runoff from that in there. And this outside lighting. Um, um, there is a uh, well for the part, the runoff for the parking was more like um, salt or whatever is going to be used and shoved into the surrounding. Yeah, we would have that. That would be part, we would get that in the comprehensive permit. That's fairly, some of that stuff is, it's not going to change the nature of the, this scale is whether it's an, a reasonable project for town. So that kind of stuff is less of a, uh, an issue at this level of commenting other than we would get that into the comprehensive permit like we always have. That kind of stuff there wildlife issues are tricky for the vernal pool. Basically, uh, oh, the vernal pool is losing two sides of its, uh, I mean, on one hand, the septic area could be still useful as a habitat because that's going to be an open area. So in some sense, the septic is contaminating on one level, could be, and on the other level, it's an open area that's peripheral to the vernal pool that could be uh, reasonable habitat, maybe not ideal. Yeah, uh, I agree with what you're saying about that reduction. And the other thing I thought of just driving by it the other day is that this entire piece of land is kind of wedged between two roads. And so it already is experiencing some fragmentation. This is fragmenting it even further. Yeah, but it's in some ways it's less than even the other uh, uh, what I find interesting is less when I think of it's fairly concentrated, the, pro the project. Um, I see you have my point is that, is that it, that like wildlife has two barriers to, it has two barriers to moving around from one habitat to the other. You know, you want to avoid that kind of island effect where wildlife has a very small area to reproduce in. And so, you know, Washington Street is one barrier. You can't, it's hard to imagine any little critters getting across 
to the other wetlands on the other side, except maybe at the very dead of night. And then Greenwood proposes another barrier. So this is just a chunk of addi additional. Right. You know, right. barriers yeah, there's obviously yeah. issues here for that kind of thing there. Luckily, right. there's something reasonable bit over here. Um, and this whole network here, this is the other project of the four houses, um, which hopefully will not have that much behind. So there's area here. All right, but for the sake of a letter here, we can make some comments about the linkage of the water use and the ground and the uh, and the surface groundwater um, and the water use levels. There's septic impacts on the vernal pool and wetlands. This so is the scale. Um, there's concerns about the scale, the stormwater. I mean, the stormwater runoff. They're going to have to meet stormwater standards. Um, so the runoff from that will be sort of dealt with, and I'm not sure it's a thing there. The outside lighting is stuff again that is often comes up. Just trying to think of fundamental problems with the project versus things that can be conditioned. Um, so besides the uh, septic impacts and the water use impacts, and basically uh, significant use of the buffer, of outer buffer, um, but it's to the extent that this other projects here protect this whole other see, since it's the whole parcel here, even though it's concentrated here, this project once it's in place manages to protect that all of I think we will end up with the fact that all of this other part of the wetland systems here are essentially protected from future development, I think, um, that nobody's, that I don't think there's the ability to put other proper projects in here. So therefore, especially given this radius here and the one there, that in the end, there is a lot of wetland and buffer zone that will get protected once this project's in place versus if they did, I think they did an as right thing where they showed about three or four other houses scattered here with lots that go all the way back. Um, that could even break up the area more than having this concentrated thing here and having all of this undeveloped area here. On the, they also have lots that would extend back. Okay, what other, uh, I mean, this at this scale, this is not a large issue to do, whether we just, put together another short letter, we can go back to the Coolidge crossing letter. Michael, you know what? I just put into the chat the second URL here, which is looks pretty helpful. It's from Natural Heritage in Pennsylvania, where they do talk about the impacts, threats to vernal pools. So there's habitat loss, that's obvious. Habitat fragmentation, changing hydrology, changing water chemistry. So. Um, it says that a variety of synthetic chemicals and heavy metals can be toxic to wildlife, and it's an important part of water quality testing. Other important variables used to monitor water quality include temperature. We hadn't, I hadn't even thought about that. Temperature changes with more, less shading, pH, dissolved oxygen. Right. Yeah, right. Kind of but this, for this letter, I mean, with those are justifications for whether we can get other mitigations. No, I agree, but I, I think it might be helpful for people to know that there have been, you know, demonstrated impacts. Yeah. This isn't right. The, uh, uh, right, I think there are going to be impacts clearly compared to having this undeveloped area. Um, but that's there's a limit to uh, that's this is basically as we've always found. This is where there's the, the balancing between the need for affordable housing and for protecting wetlands. And, um, and I'm not sure what characteristics of this we would say could be reshaped other than uh, um, that given the entire site, as some metrics are when you look at metrics, even for the buffer zone guide handbook, they would say, okay, look at the, all the average buffer zone distance on the whole lot here. And I would say that basically the fact that we're losing 50 feet for this percentage here 
which is maybe one, uh, if I look at this thing, maybe one eighth or one tenth of the entire buffer zone around the whole thing going here. And you're losing 50 over one tenth. It's only an average, what they look as a metric in the buffer zone handbook is what's the average buffer zone. This would mean the average buffer zone might be 95 feet, which they would probably from a, given under the state, they would all say is, is, is a victory given the pressures from development. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to think of whether there's a comment of saying that, right, could you spread it out so that it's not so much there and there's a little bit more distance here, but I'm not sure that that um, fact that they've managed to respect the vernal pool in this design is, right, the trade-off would be giving up if we were looking at this thing for alternatives, is giving up some of the buffer zone of the vernal pool versus the buffer zone here. And from a wetlands perspective, I'm not sure which, which, which I think to maintain this integrity, I guess I feel like it's better off this way than the other way. I don't know whether people want to comment on that. Cool. Sir, could I speak for one minute? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I just wanted to apologize for cussing earlier. I worked uh, 25, uh, 29 hours out of uh, 35. I was uh, absolutely exhausted. So it's so, all right. I didn't even. I didn't, I didn't have, have, I didn't have it on mute. I didn't have right. it on. I didn't have it on mute. But but I know you guys do have a good service here. Uh, and Sherborne, I know this is in East Boston where I grew up. You know or. <laughs> it's but, all right. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't. I don't mind cursing anyway. But I didn't hear it. I don't know if anybody else. Uh, but nice, uh, nice of you to say something. I appreciate that. <laughs> so well, I'm not. I'm not making a uh, Boston movie. You know. Uh, <laughs> I, I I grew up in the uh, Orient Heights projects in East Boston. You know. Right. But uh, <laughs> it's all right. Anyways. I'm used to it. I was. I was brought up with that too. A little of a New Yorker that. Uh, that I got ostracized when I moved to the Burbs for having a dirty mouth as a, as a high schooler. I was like, uh, wow, not, not, not everybody curses. <laughs> I'll say one last thing. I said, I got to give you guys credit. You know, the Patriots are playing right now and you guys are working at like 10 o'clock at night. You know, you're obviously, uh, you're the, the, uh, your um, Ability to uh, maintain conservation land is uh, far, far more greater than sports. So I, 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 uh, I, I appreciate you, and I want to thank you. Right. And have a nice, have a nice night. Yes. Hopefully, when you have your project done, the whole sense of the town maintaining all of this conservation of wetlands is part of the good value for the property and what makes people want to move there. I don't know whether you're moving there or you're for somebody else, but yes. Absolutely, going to live there. I love that. I love. I love that uh, area. So great. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take I care. Your Take care. Take care. Take care. Bye. I'm more worried about the fact that we're. I would be more worried at this point of my life about watching the World Cup versus the football game. Uh, but uh, okay. Any other things for the moment? There, we can maybe draft something that uh, at the next meeting. Hopefully, we get around to that so that. Uh, there's no, I don't know. Yeah, one thing, Michael, yeah. I was not on the commission when I think a site visit was for uh, for this property. Is there any way that I could see this property? I, I don't, uh, I didn't walk yeah. that many years ago. No, 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 you you actually were, but that's okay. Not everybody could make it. It was just a week or so ago. Um, the site okay. Visit. I guess maybe uh, but you could go walk the property probably uh the trail, there's a public trail yeah. um and you like it's going to remain a public trail so as long as you walk on the trail you don't need the owner's position permit yeah, I think you go you see this on this thing here you see this line that I'm highlighting here yeah. this okay. is a public trail that goes all the way around to here and it's most obvious the entry point here on Greenwood you can park there and walk this trail and look around here. You can see a lot from that. I imagine if we, uh, um, 
and it takes you right around this vernal pool area and you certainly get a good glimpse of the wetland area kind of things here and you yeah. can see, um I just want to remind you because I saw this session at MACC on commissions going bad. And Steve, you have to stay on that trail. If if we were if you were to walk anywhere else on the property, you would have to get permission from the landowner. So I'm just Which, if you, <laughs> if you walk, that. You can actually get it if you walk it and you're finding that you want to do it, I'm sure you could talk that we could you could email Bob Murchison. And I imagine he would be more than happy to either give you his own walk or let you go wander around other places so that uh, we can, uh, if you want his email address, you can email him even ahead of time if you want to get pre-approval. Steve, if you decide you want to walk it, I'm happy to contact um, the owner and go okay. with you if you like, if, if, if that's the case, but. I'll, I'll try the trail first. And if I want to walk further, I, I will. Uh, Maybe I'll I'll go ahead and contact you, Joyce. Yeah. Hey, Steve, if you want company, I will come with you because I didn't go to the most recent one. I went to one before, but I would love to walk the trail with you if, if you send me an email. Okay. Okay, doke. Anything else on this? Okay. That's the end of the agenda for tonight, I think. Um Unless anybody has anything else, I wanted to do a little on the land management, but I've I've had my fill and I've got a meeting at seven tomorrow in the morning. So, uh, um, okay, we don't have anything else, Joyce. You have quite a bit a bit of homework on three prospect, um, but hopefully mm -hmm. you can wrap up that whole that thorny thing. Okay. Nobody has anything else. I move to adjourn at 10.03. Second. Okay. Roll call vote. Michael, aye. Courtney? Aye. Steve? Aye. Carol? Aye. Matt? Aye. Okay. We got through that. My voice hurts. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for persevering. Good night. And, uh, good night. Have a good night.